on demand. Join us. We are your hosts, Brian and Britt. Check us out. Oh, it's all right. It's no big deal. We got it on the recording, but the Facebook thing, yeah. When I hit record over here, we got a few second delay to get onto the Facebook thing. It uh, sometimes, this camera's just like, I don't know. Are you ready to go? You ready to go? You ready to go? I'm ready to go. You ready to go? I got a drink in my hand already, so of course I'm ready to go. So usually in beer, you don't get to really talk religion. That's kind of a, it's just never really talked about. And that's actually my background. Uh, I, that's what I went to college for. I have a theology degree at uh, Concordia in Seward, Nebraska. They probably don't want me talking about Concordia University here drinking beer, but you know what? <laughs> it happened. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 So Martin Luther is proud of me, right? But yeah, so. That's my background. Jesus turned water into wine. Well, I heard from Brian. He shot me a text. He's like, hey, Mitchell's going to come on the show and bring some of his private stash. I'm like, oh, yes. Absolutely. (laughs) That's very (laughs) good. Great. His mic. Uh, my mic wasn't working. Uh, we're good. We're we're good. Right. We should be fine. So we were good all along. I just have to press this PFL <laughs> button. You know, you guys are fine, but <laughs> not me apparently. Gotcha. It's right. running through the headphone system. Is it all good now, John? If you could let us know, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, and um, so, yeah, on on to that. We're gonna be um, we're gonna be exploring some new uh, uh, new type of drinks here. So normally we just do some store bought stuff. Uh, Last time Mitchell was on the program, he brought some things. But this, why don't you explain what you brought for us today, Mitchell? I tied in. Absolutely. I don't know if I'm reaching too far on this, but I thought it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. This is how we get to tie this in with beer. So, uh, this breed and I collect beer. We got to about a thousand. Holy cow. We got about a thousand beers in our cellar. We are some of the aging I have room over here. Do you? (laughs) (laughs) Just saying. Uh, Needless to say, most of them. Those are all. Wait, there's wait. kind of a shadow on those. Can you uh, uh, bring it more to the center of the frame there? My favorite. It's a great vibe. So uh, I guess when you're aging beers, there's just some simple. That's the thing I call the aging beers. The aging means you're actually going to sell it kind of like wine. Nothing under eight percent.
like Goldilocks zones, but unfortunately it's not like, uh, well, from this year and a half, it's the Goldilocks zone. It's like, well, this year it's the Goldilocks yeah, zone yeah. for this flavor, and then next year it's the Goldilocks zone for this flavor. And then there is a time where they just, they just die. They're just done. They're trained. A- approximately, or does it depend on it, the beer? It totally depends on how you treat it, how you mm-hmm. take care of it. This one does. So this one right here. If someone were to create a cellar, what what would you recommend on a budget? Like just a <laughs> like a basement closet? Uh, if you have kids, they're not going to college. Just there's no money for that. That's <laughs> all the money has to go towards uh, your beer. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. We just have a bunch of just cardboard boxes. You don't get fancy. You definitely don't want to leave them down with this. It's the opposite. Yeah, wine needs the cork wet, which is why you want to do that. Do that with beer um, occasionally, and I didn't bring any cork in cages. So if you're uh, cellaring for a couple of years, you can lay them on their side for maybe a day or so just to keep them cork wet. Otherwise, they'll oxidize. But you don't want to like lay them down for at least an ounce of time because there's a lot of sediment. That's where a lot of probably you've seen most of those bottom sure. beers. It's kind of like homebrew beers. Yeah. So when it's time to uh, you know, bring it back up and drink them, you're gonna have all that juice. Right on the side of the bottle. Chunk and chunk, whatever you want. <laughs> and then that'll be on your first board. Everything's really cloudy. Nice. Cool. Well, I'm ready to crack. Yeah. Did that make you thirsty? <laughs> it does. It so, did. Well, we got to start. I got to throw up my guts. And my yeah. And out. so you and you guys just had a tapping for this not that yeah. long ago, and I missed it. Man. I'm sorry, I missed that. Here's the other beer bar. So we're gonna get nerdy for a little more. Here's your get nerdy for learn on for your cellar beer. So what's interesting? So this is a sour. So we just had this. It's a brickway. It's wild and you know, it's a sour ale. It's a blend of our true bowl. It's aged in uh, barrels, oak barrels, and it gets inoculated with wild yeast. So we've got a ton of ices, and you have this, black and purple muscles. And so what's, what's interesting about this, when you age these, these don't have to be over 8%. So these wild yeasts act, they act as a possible sort of But it actually does, it'll continue those wild uh, yeast and whatever's in them will actually continue to eat the oxygen in them. Mm-hmm. And they'll just really dry them out and make it last 10, 20 years. And that's specific to sour beers. Yeah, I've heard that, that you, you, you at least want to age it like minimum a year, and it's way better after a year as a like true beer. Right. right, there's some styles like that, uh, like Bambix and uh, Guzzi. So you got your, your styles of Bambix, that's both super young and fresh, and it's almost all drinkable. Every year, and then some. If you wait three years, that's quite a magic number there. And then people are just like, "Oh, I'm not good." The ones that are undrinkable, the ones that are perfect, the ones that are perfect. Nancy, sorry, uh, we're getting another mic not working. Nancy, can you just let me know which which mic is not working? Sorry, we're working on some new technology. And if you haven't noticed, we have a new setup here. Uh, we had uh, potentially six people. Uh, as you can see, four around the table, and uh, we will have probably one come a little later if he's able to make it. But uh, uh, yeah, are all the mics supposed, everything supposed looks to good. be on? I mean, all right. I'm getting levels and everything, so it looks, looks good to me. But I'm okay, all right. Well, we'll just we'll just continue yeah. on. Do then. you want me to put some of these in the fridge while we're no, trying some of these? So you let them set out. Too, so sitting out, if you're in my school, you're going to miss a lot of the flavors. They're going to be too muted. And that's actually why the big beers they want you to drink it because they don't they don't want you to smell they don't want you right to it takes away the flavor in that way. <laughs> flavor yeah. yeah the flavor yeah and this one tastes slightly less like water <laughs> oh man I'm uh, I'm excited have you yep. now are you a sour beer fan or have you had sour beers I had before? a couple sour beers in Kansas City has a couple uh, crane brewing and it was big yes. down there so yeah. it's a category I'm just breaking into so. Do we need to pass you some? Yeah, that's right. So, I'm excited. Now, this was this uh, was this close to Father's Day? Is that when the tapping event was? Yeah, the week before. The week before, okay. So we also we have on tap and bottles. We did way more bottles than last year. This is last year's version, oh. by the way. I just saw that somebody said there's a sound drowning out everything, so I turned off the music that we have in our headphones. Oh, okay. Setting that out, so there okay. we go. Better. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. All right. Mucho appreciado. All right. New set, new place, new things, new mm-hmm. toys, new soundboards. So. I'm getting a little sound still. Or music. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. You'll you'll and get yeah, it. We'll get it, but they won't good. get it. That's more for us. Yes. <laughs> to kill, the, to <laughs> kill the ambient of. Hello. 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 <laughs> hey, John. Anybody gonna say anything? Welcome to the program, John. All right. So uh, sour beer, wild Olivia. I'm excited. Cool. Oh man, you can smell the the sourness. Yeah. Right off. Uh, our fan. Yeah. Again, oh, it's, it's this table we can't we can't clinky. It's like air clinky. Clink. Yeah. So clink. we're yeah. we're doing air clinkies. <laughs> <laughs> soundboard. Yeah. You need a soundboard. Yeah. Nice. So I'm not a huge sour fan. Not a bit, you know. Yeah. You know uh, but this, this is smooth for yeah. a sour. Mm-hmm. It yeah. kind of reminds me of a vinegary apple juice, but in a good way. Yeah, it's kind of got, it's anything that anybody says right now, you're going to get all that. But it's kind of in a good way. It's got a nice blend mm-hmm. of all those things. Okay. And it then, hits you on the back of the tongue. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. back, it kind of tingles. Yep. And there's probably some things, if I tell you, you're going to taste it. So this is this part of this Britannomyces you're going to get like this uh, really tangy pineapple. You're going to get like this uh, wild cherry, maybe like a sour cherry note. Uh, a little bit of grass, a little bit of hay, a little barnyard characteristics, mm. a little sour. I like, the like barnyard a, characteristics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real thing. Mm-hmm. So is the key to keep them like a year before you start cracking them open? On sours, uh, the one we just did is, is good right now. Of course, mm-hmm. that's been aging for a while. Mm-hmm. But it's just kind of you kind of develop your own personal yeah, the way you like it. So that's why I encourage, and this has nothing. I'm not trying to sell five bottles at a time, <laughs> but it's fun to see what it does over time. Sure. And then how you you're trying it. to sell five bottles at a time? I'm trying to sell oh ten. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, why are you shooting low? With, ten, with that said, yeah. is this your only sour? Do you guys have this on tap already? This or? is the only one. Okay. And it's a pretty dangerous. So doing sours in the in a brewery is playing with fire. Yeah. Or just playing. Is with it sour because beers. so much can go wrong? <laughs> is that why? It can contaminate your whole brewery, and you basically got to grenade it and start over. Wow. wow. Yikes. Yeah. All right. Well, and Very I just quickly. noticed uh, with the new setup and the camera panning, we should uh, mention the peanut gallery over here. We do oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> is she in it? Yeah, yeah just, just yeah. a little okay. bit. Every once in a while. Sabrina, so, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Your glass. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Cheers. Yeah. Um, every once in a while. Well, hopefully she has a question every once in a while. You know? Yeah. That's what we like to hear. Uh, well, let's, let's, uh, let's do a recap. I think that we need to do that a little bit for those that are, uh, that did not watch the last episode. We need to recap a little bit of, uh, what CRISPR is and what we're talking about with this, uh, with this episode. Um, CRISPR stands for clustered regularly interspaced short palindromatic repeats. And, um, Nick, do you want to just kind of recap what it, uh, what it, it does specifically, and it's the CRISPR Cas9 system is what we're talking fully, but we're going to just con- call it CRISPR. Yeah, so basically, uh, scientists discovered this uh, Cas9 system, the CRISPR system, in viruses. It was a defense mechanism that uh, a lot of, or I'm sorry, in bacteria, that bacteria used to fend off viruses. So viruses, I think it's 50% of all living organisms in the ocean die every day. Due to viruses, so they wow, need a. That's crazy. They need a pretty good defense system, uh, and their go-to is, uh, or I guess their last resort really is uh, CRISPR and the Cas9 system. Mm-hmm. What that does is that kind of comes in and, and cuts this DNA in specific places, and then it steals some of that, some chunk of that DNA, and that's how it remembers. It's kind of like a mugshot that that uh, bacteria can hold and say, "Hey, if you see any of this ever again, just send the whole troop of our defense system over and, and wipe that virus out." But um, science today has yeah, harnessed we, that power. Oh yeah, oh yeah, just a little but bit. I didn't, and I didn't know how much you knew about the CRISPR system. I know I sent you some material on that, but not, not nearly as much as I thought I did. When I, <laughs> after I watched them, I'm like, oh my goodness, wow, <laughs> yeah, that's so it's my, awesome and scary. My, Mike was on the program before, and he's one of those people that knows a lot about a lot of things, <laughs> and we blew his mind last really? time. Oh yeah, he uh. yeah he had no idea. He's like, I watched videos, but he's like, to hear you talk about it, it's way bigger and way more involved and way easier to access now. So why don't you talk about what science is? How how do we hijack the CRISPR Cas9 system? Yeah, sure. So uh, they originally found this defense system, you know, forty years ago, thirty years ago. And didn't think much of it. It just was an interesting, weird sequence of repeating. They didn't know um, what to make of it. Right. They didn't know what. They just knew it was interesting and Mm -hmm. put it on the back shelf and did other things, other science. Um, And then eventually someone came around and realized kind of this larger implication for science, which is we have this thing that can specifically cut out DNA at specific parts. And then we could really put whatever we wanted into there. And that really opens up a, you know, this infinite array of, of options you have. You can edit the human genome in a very specific way. 
uh, we've been able to edit our genome uh, on the molecular level, molecular level for a long time now. Uh, but to be able to have it very specific that is universal, and I know you mentioned that last time, it's right. no species to this point. Uh, that is, it does not work in. Yeah, that it does not work in. Which any, is speci- huge. any species that has DNA, it works in. So and, far that we found. And RNA now. Oh, and RNA. Okay. So uh, we can also work on retroviruses and, and other uh, single-stranded DNA. Nice. So. Well, I mean... Yeah, N- nice is in perspective. Right, <laughs> <So>. <laughs> nice for the scientists at yeah, least. So, exactly. exactly. Uh, so yeah, so basically, any uh, gene that we've mapped that we want to splice out and splice something else in, uh, we can do theoretically. And so the potential for this, and that's kind of what we're going to be talking about in this one, is is the potential for humanity and society at large, and the implications of that in religion and societal structure. Um, that's what we'll be talking about today. Well, because the possi- currently right now they're just doing it in animals and you know so, food, right? Ex- you know. With the exception of that, the the time that China actually did experiment on a few human embryos, they were going to be discarded anyway. They were never going to let them mature. And in fact, what was it? A quarter? I think they started with like eighty some, and they ended up only having twenty some that were viable. Mm-hmm. And then they discarded them. And shortly after that is when science community as a whole said. Time out. Let's yeah. Let's wait on human testing and all that, that stuff. You know that was a big thing for me. It's like if let's just say for embryos, they they yeah. are human testing. Yeah. I should say right. Embryos are different, and we'll get into why that's different in a little bit. Well, I just want to bring up the fact that if you decide to go ahead and choose a human being to do this to, like okay, uh, Cindy over here, uh, they're gonna have a a baby. Uh, we'll try it out on that. You know. The implications on that, you're not only changing that baby's genes, you're changing that baby's genes and, and their genes and their genes and their genes right. yeah, forever. That, that has to be done at the embryonic level. Now, if you're changing a person, whether that person is a baby or an adult. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. you do it before they were actually born. Right. Like they were they're this big, you know. Mm-hmm. No, it's yep. a speck of dust. The the only way to pass it, if you did it as an adult to someone, the only way to pass it on is if we did what we call it last time, uh, put CRISPR on autopilot. The well, right if you take that out of their DNA, they're going to transfer that DNA to their sibling that they have. Mm-hmm. The, so you, not that, sibling, that, you mean child. Child, yeah. yes. <laughs> their child that they have. So, I mean, the implications are forever. Yep. Right. You want to say... Uh, this person right here, I'm going to have stronger bones and uh, higher intelligence. Diseases never going to get any diseases. Mm-hmm. Well, their children are going to have stronger bones and are you know less susceptible to diseases from here on out. And to make that even forever. more crazy, so typically with genetics, you have this kind of percentage chance, right? Like a fifty fifty chance mm-hmm. of the mother's or the father's DNA. But they have this uh, system called Gene Drive, which basically says, "Now nah, forget all that." Uh, this gene is going to be way more important, and it's always going to get passed on. So you could literally prioritize put it on your autopilot. gene. Yep, like on autopilot, and yeah. then say, nope, forget about any chance. It's always going to be passed on. Yeah. They were also talking about what about the the fact that say you change this part, this gene, whatever, but the whole body reacts to everything how that goes. So it's like, right. hey, this is great, this is going to be fantastic, and that's been changed. With it. But then all of a sudden, the the whole rest of the body exactly so, acts, reacts. To so that. what you're talking if there is a um, if, if they mess up and there's a uh, slight deviation in something at the embryonic level, mm-hmm. that's going to go across your entire body because you started at the embryonic level and it, you know, it's just going to expand upon that. So they may have fixed, <clears throat> excuse me, they may have fixed this one thing, but forever changed everything else. And everybody's different. So it's like, hey, this should work, but not for everybody. Exactly. Yeah. And we have, we've sequenced the DNA, but we don't know what it all means right now. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're not, I mean, I mean, I know we know what a lot of it does. Right? Is it? Yeah. Okay. But not everything. So it's like going into a word processor and finding and replacing, but you don't know what half of the translation is. So you're just kind of hoping it makes sense at the end of the day. Right. Okay. All right. Well, that makes sense. Uh, they are call- like the scientists are calling this like a CRISPR revolution just because it has become so cheap and readily accessible. There's lots and lots of labs and even. Uh, you can you can buy it at home. You Not can go you... on to Amazon right now and buy it at home. Yep. Yeah. Do it at home. Was that uh, was that you that was what? saying the CRISPR? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can be a scientist at home. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's a scientist. Doctor Jekyll and Mister yeah. Hyde. What's yeah. going on? Uh, over here? I think 160 bucks, and you can get your own uh, beer, fluorescent beer CRISPR kit, where you can grow your own yeast and then put that in your home brew beer, and it'll glow in the dark. So, there you go. CRISPR, yay! That 
I call those clickbait beers. It's just really <laughs> yeah. glow in the dark, throwing helium beers. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> People want it. What are you talking about? <laughs> yep. That video was convincing. It was. Very it was. Convincing. Very, yeah, yep. It was very funny. Yeah. That was I fake news, by the way. I know how a sound machine works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and this this technology, while it's exploding fast, um, there there has always been technology that comes out that the public has perceived negatively to begin with. And I'm not saying that we need to per- perceive this negatively or positively, but I do need. I think we need to spend some caution. Absolutely. Or put some caution on it. And um, things like uh, when test tube babies were a thing back in the 70s and 80s. And now we've got over. Oh, he, you're talking about Twins, the movie. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's yeah. next week. Yeah. So. One guy got all the crap, leftover <laughs> stuff. And the right. other guy, yeah, that's, that's really I kind of. That's actually kind of what we're talking about being able to do, you know, with, with those human embryos. The whole story spawned from a conversation on Gattaca, correct? Gat- yes. That's what started this whole rabbit hole of. Things for us, yes, absolutely. And that's like I think that's a perfect uh, kind of metaphor. For Any, where anybody we're that's at. seen the movie Gattaca came out. Uh, I want to say ninety nine ish time frame. Yeah. Ethan Hawke, Uma Thurman, yeah, good movie. Jude Law was in it. Yeah, I mean, if you didn't have the right DNA, you were uh, pretty much screwed. Yep, <laughs> right. Pretty yep. much, you yeah. know. Well, so the way I want to DNA s- doesn't look good. Yeah. You're going to be a trash guy. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah. Here you go. I'm just born. <laughs> so the way I kind of want to structure this talk, I want to start with the religious aspects of it, and then we'll get into the social aspects, which we kind of touched on on the last talk, but just briefly. So with the religious aspects, um, I mean, yeah, I, I guess some more of that. Yeah. Is this a, yeah. Just pass it around. Please and thank you. I'm used to pouring for everybody. No, it's so I'll gladly pass it around. So at this point, basically, we're we're forcing evolution. We're we're playing God, and um, no, that's mine. So, but this isn't something new because, uh, and you had mentioned it last uh, last episode, the epigenetics, Mm -hmm. which is basically how environments already affects us. Correct. So that's that's already happening, but at a much slower rate than what CRISPR would do. Right. It's certainly not as as guided. For a long time, the theory was natural selection, been purely natural selection, which is survival of the fittest. And if you're if you're in shape, you're going to find someone who else who wants you to be in shape, and then you're going to have more babies that way, uh, which seems to make sense. But we we've, what we've realized as scientists is there's this uh, kind of new fledgling um, science of epigenetics, which completely has to do with your environment. We always talk nature versus nurture as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now there's kind of a scientific background to the nature versus nurture. So if I go and lift weights for a year, uh, my DNA is going to change. It's going to, uh, what we call methylate. So different parts of my, uh, genome, different parts of my DNA are going to express more, right? I need mm-hmm. more, uh, energy for my muscles. I need more energy for this and that. Uh, and it changes your, your metabolism changes. Sure, all yep, your metabolism changes. And those methylations don't just disappear. These little markers on your DNA don't disappear when you when you have a kid, and they're going to be more likely to have um, uh, those those chunks of DNA that say, "Hey, you're athletic," mm-hmm. uh, than someone who maybe just sits down and plays video games all day and watches Netflix and has a kid. So, so, so what you are saying is, if you ch- before you have kids, sure. if you decided you needed to get on this healthier lifestyle and you lifted weights and you got on a CrossFit program or whatever, and you changed your DNA, that DNA has a fifty percent chance of passing on to your child. Yep, and you're and you're improving those odds by being healthier, which is something we've always kind of assumed. But mm-hmm. uh, for a long time there, there was are are you just born genetically fit or not? And we've realized that. Uh, and they they did this experiment, and I don't have the details on uh, with me right now, uh, with someone who was obese and then began to work out, and their child still expressed those same genes that a typical athlete would Interesting. because their DNA was uh, methylated. But a that's a way. lot slower process than what we're Certainly, talking about right. today. You're not, you don't get to just, again, sit on the couch, watch right. Netflix, and then click a button that says, also, my kid's going to be fit. Right, because with that, basically, you're experimenting on yourself, yep. and you're just choosing a healthier lifestyle, sure. and hopefully that your kids will retain those genes right there's a chance though. I just, he, we just had a question can we, can we oh see that sure yeah jason uh so jason thank you for the question um he says the problem is uh what it means to be fit can change now a fat guy can do better than a person in oh let's see more in shape because he uses uh skilled labor so um let, let's let's play that out let's say sure. you are a morbidly obese person 
um, and, and we're getting away from CRISPR a little bit here, but um, and you decide to do a healthier lifestyle, you're still obese, but you're getting healthier. Does that change your DNA and make it possible for your children to have a, a better chance of being healthier infants or, or adults? Yeah, you're yeah. certainly you're certainly improving those odds because again, as you um, work out on this workout regimen, whatever that may be, your body needs different things than it needed when it was just going to sit and relax. Mm -hmm. And because of those needs, it expresses different genes differently. And some get expressed, get expressed more than others. Fat storage obviously is going to go down mm -hmm. if you're, um, if you're working out more, if you're, if you're staying more active. And again, the second you have a kid, those genes are getting passed down with those markers already in place mm -hmm. from where you're at at that moment. That's Kind of a very simple version of what epigenetics is, so. but with CRISPR, my, my mind's getting blown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and this is I'm, like the backstory to I'm some learning. little bit about CRISPR. <laughs> it just seems Excellent. like the way you say it, you say it like it's just one on one, and I'm sitting over here like I don't want to talk because this is I'm learning. It's, stuff. So it's definitely not one on one. Did you, did you need no, paper and uh, did you need no, to chat some beer, stuff? Though. Did you know that? I, I have that right here, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> which is almost as good. <laughs> well, think about it. When it you learned about good. when you learned about evolution and natural selection, that was it. It was it was all. There was this kind of fifty fifty chance, and that was that was all there was. It was not, um, but then we started nurture messing with, at all. It like, was all nature. It was just chance. That's what right, we learned. Right, but then we started doing crops. You know, we started yep. genetically modifying by selectively breeding them, right? Which is in essence genetically modifying sure. them. Sure. Yep. Um, but uh, with CRISPR, we could say that to that same person that that is obese and they want a healthier lifestyle, we could give them a shot of CRISPR. Uh, whether it's a, a shot of CRISPR right. or a, a little shot of CRISPR, and that would instantly change their DNA, or over a matter of days sure. or weeks, right? And then for their children, yeah, and then for their children, yep. they would have a chance, right, for their children. Now, you know, I'm not a scientist. You, you getting all this thing? Um, <laughs> you get, you, you've got the thinking man uh, but, po posture going on here. <laughs> I'm processing. Well, here's what it is. Uh, it's like GM GMOs. Yep. You know, it's like what you find in food. It's genetically modified food. It's genetically modified organisms. Um, I guess my question is, what if we screw this all up? What if? What if? Uh, there's a high potential of that. There's a very high potential we're, of that. We're like, really good at that. We do well, it all you the know, time. Like so, so we, yeah. we 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 make the superhuman. You know, like totally uh, won't get into diseases. Totally is fit. Mm -hmm. uh, totally is the smartest person ever. But then the food side of the thing. Would that screw with anything? Y yes, what you ingest? You're, you're kind of getting into the the social aspects. I, I do want to talk like religious aspects first, and then okay. we'll get into the social right, structure enough. because there's there's a little it bit was of just time. pondering on my mind, <laughs> and, that's, and that's fine. So um, yeah, I do want to let's start with the basics cool. with um, the ethics or the religious aspects of GMOs of genetically modified organisms. Now I know what whatever your line is on GMOs. Is it we are splicing DNA with CRISPR? Or are we selectively breeding crops? Those are both GMOs, but one is more acceptable because we're just taking this plant here, which grows better over here, and we're using it over here. And then over time, then its offspring will grow better here. Uh, with CRISPR, we can say, nope, we want this plant to grow better here. I know it doesn't really, it's not natural to grow here, but we can make it grow here because we have CRISPR. Right. So what do you think the religious aspects of that are in plants? Right now, we're gonna we're gonna start leading up to uh, <laughs> All right. start start easy. Come on, theology well, major. No, I've, well, no, I've always been. Maybe that's what my my theology major is. Well, on the plant side, I, I wanted to. Go that's more, more acceptable. Okay, I think it's right? kind of cool. I mean, yeah, to I, create something that uh, you you eat, but like. It's not prone to disease. Yeah. It's not it, well right now um, with got the bananas. Those, yeah. So right now there's a big problem with bananas. Huge and there's problem. A, there's a big uh, virus or not a virus. Uh, it's so it's an organism that's eating them essentially. So, so I just want to destroy them. A little tangent because I have something directly to that, and then you can continue on. So the bananas are all clones of each other, basically. Everything is the exact same genetic makeup for bananas across the entire planet. So all it takes is one virus, and it can wipe wipe out all bananas on the planet. And so they would but with that said, that. is that just bananas, is, or is that found in other things like lettuce, or is have they just checked out bananas? And they're like, oh, it's all the same everywhere, <laughs> but they haven't checked out broccoli. They haven't checked out all the other things. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> Typically, uh, so a species. <laughs> As I no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> so a species is a species is a species, and typically your DNA is going to be very very similar across any chunk of a species. Humans 
have sure. very similar DNA compared to a chimpanzee or compared to a, a banana. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm not 100% sure on the banana. I know it's very similar across the board, across mm-hmm. uh, the world. And I'm not sure if it's exactly clones or so, if it's... Yeah, the, the way I heard it explained, there was a Chinese scientist and he said, and that was the video that I sent out today and I wish I would have sent it to you and I'm sorry. Um, but he said that the genetic makeup was almost identical. Okay. So, that, so not a very clone, similar to yeah, a very clone, similar. like a twin almost. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then... And they're, and they're using CRISPR to try and fix this, to sure. make a, 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 a banana that is resistant to this virus without having to use pesticides all over the world. Right. So... I mean, I guess we could agree, we could probably all agree at this table that if we had a technology that would make the banana resistant to those strains without using pesticides, that's that's probably a good thing, right? Yeah, so I want to dig in online. I don't know if it's the crazies or is there ever like a real conversation on the religious aspect. Why would that be a bad thing? So I think that it, it's just anytime we're messing with nature, people start getting up all in arms. And even more specifically, anytime you're messing with the your DNA, your genetic code. So what, that's the what line. Makes you, yeah. you. So that's the line. But why then. is that the line? But well, basically so, anything else goes. And the, I think the line has changed, right, over the last oh, hundred yeah. years, well, the last two hundred years. Well, that, right? that's kind of where, I, yeah, and that's where I was going with, with uh, the test tube babies. Yeah, you know that was that was a big line. A IDF, lot of people yeah. said, yeah, in vitro fertilization. People were like, no, this is going against God's plan. If you can't have babies, then you can't have babies. And now there are millions in the last thirty or forty years, however long we've had uh, in vitro fertilization, right. Uh, there are literally millions of people having babies that weren't able to have babies before. And you certainly Which wouldn't walk right. up to them and tell them that's you're a terrible person for doing this. Right. And, but you and, would but have at, maybe 30 years at ago. At the beginning, right. yeah, they, they yeah. certainly were. Absolutely. So um, then the next the, then the next one after plant, I mean, plants, that's kind of a given. We're, we're fine with that. What about, because we talked about it last episode, the woolly mammoth. What if we start bringing oh, back yeah. extinct animals? Yeah. Is that what? What are the ethics behind that? I mean, did they? I, I think that we need to take this on a pause. Oh yeah, and a <laughs> commercial break. <laughs> commercial break. Yes, for the next beer. For oh. the next beer. Yeah, that's a good good pause right there. Today's show is brought to you by <laughs> Wooly Mammoth. Barley wine. The Wooly Mammoth. <laughs> It'll put hair on your chest. <laughs> Get you some. <laughs> so oh. what are we drinking up next? Uh, we're gonna get to these great divide ones that are seven eight years old. Woo. So uh, earlier when I mentioned the barley wines, when they come out fresh, the American ones, they're, they're, they're in your face, ripping the enamel off your teeth and uh, making you forget about Monday type <laughs> barley wines. <laughs> but over time, what this should be doing, what I'm guessing, if we haven't destroyed it in seven years, because we've moved a couple times, so temperature could affect it. Uh, what I think now, it's gone from a lot of toffee, caramel, uh, maybe some brown sugar notes. You're going to get into these really uh, aged flavors. And by that, I mean leather tobacco, sherry, some really just, um, hmm. even some uh, cardboard type flavors. I like chewing this. on some leather. so <laughs> <laughs> In cardboard. But you know what? If you pick up any of those notes, let me know. He'd be like, oh yeah, that sounds stupid, but whoa, there but it is. But you're right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is sure so gritty. I, I have a, while you open that, Mitchell, I do have a quick question. So um, on the temperature aspect of it, um, on average, what, uh, what kind of time frame are you talking about? Like if you are moving, and okay. you have it. It has to spend an entire day out of your cellar. Is that going to affect the beer much, or is it more like a week or uh, more? You're looking at extremes: extreme temperatures, extreme times. Okay, it's it, it's pretty forgiving to a certain aspect, but you can't just let it get back up to Omaha weather right now. So, like, if you let it sit, like, let's say you moved in July and it's mm-hmm. sitting in the U-Haul for a day at 110 that degrees, would, that would be bad. Okay, mm-hmm. that's that's okay. pretty extreme. All right, so even a day. At, at 100, kind of, at, yeah, that okay. would do it. Okay. So why, I don't know why that reminded me of that movie. Extreme! <laughs> it's extreme! And they're all like drinking <laughs> Joe Cola the whole time. Extreme! Oh. No, not that, not that kind of extreme. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know exactly what you're talking about. But, and also... Uh, Man, this is a fancy one. It's got foil wrap and everything. Oh, yeah. But every once in a while, there are some. It's where you spend $20 on the bottle, and you save it, and you're excited, and you, and you wait five years, and then you drink it, and it's... Crap. You want to yeah. cry. It's like you just pour oh, down the drain and you're just like you, a part of you dies. Mm-hmm. Just, well, I mean, and that's the whole thing like with homebrewing, right? I mean, you experiment and then uh, after after a month or so of it uh, sitting and resting and you just... You can't whole, get it attached to it. It's just part of yep. brewing. You're mm-hmm. going to dump a lot. You're going to have a lot of just bad beer. It's just It just happens. Yep. It just happens. Spend right. sixty dollars on a uh, fluorescent beer kit and it doesn't glow. Fluorescent. <laughs> now, what are you gonna do? How does that improve or is it the like quality a, of life? Yeah. Or is it like know. a glow stick? Like if I glow- lose my beer and it's dark yeah. out, then when I'll. You- I was gonna say, <laughs> if you lose your beer at night and we need your glow in the dark beer, 
It's yeah. time to go home. We have other problems. <laughs> That's funny. Question. It's my safety beer. So if you're drinking <laughs> glow-in-the-dark beer. It keeps me safe when, I'm, safe when I'm jogging at night. Yeah. If you drink glow-in-the-dark <laughs> beer, jogging. do yeah, you yeah. pee glow-in-the-dark? Uh, I wonder if it, we well, metabolize it. I was going to say, your liver is going to filter out a lot of that, and your you know, pancreas is going to filter out a lot of all of that. So could what you that doing genetically t- alter your body to create... Glow the dark here. You could with CRISPR. And why wouldn't you? Because why doesn't? Why wouldn't anyone want? That would actually be kind of cool at night. So you know, yeah. have to turn on the hey lights. Guys, yeah. check this out. <laughs> yeah. My <laughs> wife would love it. Go to the bathroom. To see, this, this is out. exactly yeah. where you're what missing you everything. Doing? No, then there's proof it's you. Yeah. Uh, so that'd be bad. Like, oh, you know, yeah. Brett was here. And so, <laughs> guys, think of this one. You could write. She your... comes in, you peed on the seat. No, I do. Yeah, yeah, I knew. You're the purple one. Guys, we could write our names in the snow in color. Forever. Forever. <laughs> oh man! All right, so I, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we derailed Changing a little bit stuff. ago. Yep. Oh man! So um, back on the train. Ooh. Oh yeah, I good. guess we should. Uh, Ooh, is this like a uh, barley? Wow. Oh, yeah. You said barley wine, right? So is that what we're drinking? A lot richer flavor. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. And yeah, you're breaking out the. Have, is this going to wreck Carmel our palate too. going from a sour to a barley wine? Oh, is that drink some water and some yeah. some of those. Um, oh yeah. Brian, nice job. Uh, sorry. That's right. sorry. I, I don't have any electronics right there, <laughs> so that's good. You, yeah. you, you spilt it on the uh, Pick the one part. slate yeah. table, yeah. so yeah. you're fine. All right. So actually, without tasting it, I've had this, actually, gosh, four years. I haven't had one of these in four years. So oh, my gosh. Right off the nose, I get like that <laughs> that cherry, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. almost maraschino cherry, and then a little bit of like... It's very woody. Okay. It's very woody to yeah. me. I, 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 I did say world. Um... <laughs> uh, no, I, I took vanilla. a sip. Yeah, um, that is very. And barley wines very always floral. hit me like in the back. That's barley wines. The, the flavor just like like you said. I think but the this, cheese would go very well with that. Yeah, the, yeah. The cheese, cheese is a well good choice. And what kind of cheese is it? The cheese stands alone. Um, it's oh, the man. gold cheese from Hy-Vee. Mm-hmm. The gold. You ask, no, go to Hy-Vee and be like, I want the gold cheese, and they're like, Oh, it's yeah, it's the one with the gold Here foil on it. Yeah, <laughs> it's not just the gold foil. It's called gold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's good. Mm. This they, barley they also wine, make them are low, and they make a chive or something like that. I've had a lot of barley good. wine, and for me, I like barley wine. I like the flavor, but for me, because they're so heavy hitters, they're like a one and done for me. This is actually a, a lot smoother than some of the barley wines that I've had before. Is it because of the age process? Oh, yeah. Mellowed absolutely. out? All those ones I mentioned earlier, you're getting a little touch of all that. And I don't know if you've ever had, if you've ever had a beer that's almost eight years old. Have you ever had an eight-year-old beer? I, I can't not. say I have in it. college once. See, I usually I, I <laughs> PBR never, that was in the never again. Yeah, oh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> so fun fact: the uh, PBR in your fridge you were in years ago for eight years. does not age well. Yeah. No. You don't <laughs> get notes of cherry after oh, eight man. years in a PBR. Lots of people go to college for eight years. Temperature. <laughs> They're called doctors. Don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't wait for it to come to room temperature Shut before you drink it. <laughs> so I'm usually uh, looking for. Done. I'm usually looking for the freshest beer out there. You know, that's me. I love that pseudo sewer. Or right stone, the drink by drink by day, enjoy, yeah. enjoy by exactly. Whatever. So yeah. when I'm looking for beer, I'm looking for the freshest beer. Now for wine, then right. I'm looking for old and good. Unless it's an Opus One, then it's 2011, which the corkscrew had one available, and it was uh, they could you could buy it by the glass. And can, so there'd be four glasses, right? Uh, yeah. Forty eight dollars glass, <laughs> but it's a two hundred some odd dollar bottle of wine. So. Right. You know, right. can, you, to them. can you age any beer over 8%? No. Good question, because okay. I was going to get to that. So we just had our pregame beer was? Uh, uh, the uh, Super Juice. Super, Super Juice from Cross Train. I was. believe, what percentage is that? That's, it's high up there. It's it's, it's very high up it there. It has to be there at least 8. Let me see here. 9.4. So that would fit the qualification. Hey, can I age that? A lot of hops, a lot of bitterness. Uh, no. Because Which is funny, because hops is a preservative. Right, but in IPAs, super hoppy beers like that, uh, they will the degradation on that will nice word. Greatly. Oh, degradation. Yeah, we're <laughs> this is a one barley and wine type <laughs> vocabulary. Right? <laughs> it breaks down uh, way too fast. It's just you can't you can't age IPAs. They even make uh, Dogfish Head makes an, like an eighteen percent triple IPA. Oh, wow! But it turns wow. into a barley wine. So the hops fade. Hops fade very very fast. I almost brought that the Dogfish. Which one? The, the, yeah, the really? one you're talking about. <laughs> I just had their 90 minute IPA. That was pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, double they, they the just don't dip hold up. You know, oh man, I wish. But don't leave it in your fridge. I, I actually brought uh, brought some Crooked Stave. 
Stave. Oh. Stave. Okay. Uh, it's uh, IPA 6.8. Yeah, they got that on tap there. Casual pint. <laughs> <laughs> Your five dollar check is in the mail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, they're only good, they're, they're they're good only twenty there. more beers when we can pay <laughs> for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got time. I mean, is that a challenge? We got well, all right. Sweet. We started earlier. Today, I see. So. I have two of them in the yeah. fridge there. So when back. you're aging, you would want to keep uh, not metal cans, right? You would go glass. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't well, matter. the metal okay. cans. I mean, they don't let any light through. That's so what, that's, just, that's what I thought. But yep. I didn't yeah. know. Right. Yeah, no, that's and that's not. that's the only way I've heard that a lot. It's I've heard it for years, but even more now, the only way you can skunk a beer is through sunlight. Hmm. Age, hmm. Aged or old. air, right? Nope. Air won't skunk a beer. No, okay. only sunlight. Okay. Should uh, we talk about the brewery that just had their? Um, did you guys hear about this? The, the bourbon and the bourbon collapse. The distillery. Yeah, yeah, the it was distillery. like nine thousand, not like beer barrels or oh, bar- it was actual oak barrels. Mm-hmm. I feel bad. Units, nine thousand units. Mm-hmm. I mean, cra- did you see? It was built out of like it was like a, a couple steel twigs, sh- yeah. Yeah. a couple two yeah. by fours. Like, what did you think it was, was going to happen? Yeah. It was, what, what's the what's the group that sang well, the uh, tin that- roof? <laughs> so, <laughs> rusted. Uh, that would have been yeah. a better yeah. building. That yeah. was terrible. You it was so much, like. 200-year-old two-by-fours. I'm glad they built yeah. it in half, though. So there was, there was like half the building well, still there. Right. I was like, the other half will be next week. Get, yeah. get it out of there. Get mm-hmm. it out. Well, yeah, we can't move it. It's unsafe. But they all <laughs> look, they look, they looked intact, though. I would, they're they pretty, looked pretty intact. They're pretty sturdy. I don't know if you ever dropped a 600-pound barrel full of beer, but they I, I, hold up. That's what I work out with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's my workout. The, the metal rings on them, you know. <laughs> they hold it pretty well. So I would think if the first one fell, like they're just going to... It, didn't, on it each did other. not look like any were broken because they did the aerial shot. There was no liquid. I bet you there's some down there. Well, okay, out of some. nine thousand, I would say you know four hundred, but <laughs> nine thousand, yeah. hundred. Okay. All yeah. right, we're gonna bring we're gonna bring yeah, this train back on the track. So, yeah. All right. So um, we did pause at the bringing back extinct animals. Yes. With Chris, using CRISPR, especially so, the woolly mammoth. Right. Which so, is you know I mean the woolly mammoth you can actually do that uh, fairly easy. You know we've already got elephants. You mm-hmm. know. Well, and so I'm going to borrow a quote from uh, uh, Jeff from uh, Jurassic Park, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, they had their chance. <laughs> Isn't this kind of like, I don't know, is the butterfly effect? Is that the wrong phrase? If you bring something back and it affects the whole ecosystem. That's, that is oh, a yeah. butterfly effect, yep. yeah. That's exactly what <laughs> like it is. Like if we like make super <clears throat> insects, but the insect is mainly a food for some other animal. Now the animal can't eat it. Now that animal, it's just... Where do you stop? Exactly. Well, and so the reasons they wanted to bring it back was there. Oh, yeah. There's a fungus that yeah. they they eat or something like that, and then they wanted to trample down the greenhouse effect. Or something. Yeah. So if they trample down snow, yeah, packed snow melts slower. That's really specific to bring back mammoths. If I that's know. Your only right? reason. Let's yeah. let it go. How about you get some bobcats <laughs> or something out there and just like uh, yeah. pack the snow yourself? You know? Yeah. But then you'd use greenhouse gases to uh, <laughs> to do <laughs> yeah. that. So. But what yes. about what about the uh, what about them farting? I mean, does it's, that does that can contribute? To I the, mean, seriously, you know. just because you buy a Prius, you're not saving the world. What if I flip the script though, and I said, if we, if humans were the cause of an extinction of a species, if we could, we could literally link it to us. Which, I which mean, we, you could maybe so, what holy mammoths do. But I mean, they, they weren't. So the the you know how many people? Because back then they didn't have automatic weapons; they had yeah. spears, right. and they you know so it took an entire village or at least a right. party of ten or twelve right. to take down one woolly mammoth. Sure, they're not doing this for sport; mm-hmm. they're doing this to feed the. The the tribe, the, yeah, exactly. So I mean, I don't, I don't think we wiped them out. It, no, I, certainly, and I'm not arguing that. I'm saying, right. but if we could find a species that we did that you could link to humans as, you really messed up. Oh, okay. Then all of a sudden, is it is the onus on us to say, well, now we have this technology to undo that mistake? Right, because we're supposed to protect the species. Right, we so. could say woolly mammoths would be a fun experiment to, I guess, fun in quotations, right? Uh, to to try out. But if there was a species specifically that we cause to go extinct now do we have that moral obligation to undo that mistake or can we indefinitely uh destroy species and not but when ever we, with the technology fix it right and so and we got into this a little bit at the last talk we yep. talked about the degradation of dna yep. and we can bring back the woolly mammoth we can is it going to be the same woolly mammoth that was originally roaming the earth right or are we filling the gaps like in Jurassic Park? I, we're going to use frog DNA to bring I back just, dinosaurs. I just think it's just because we can. Like, why stop there? Because if we bring, but we back- never stop to think about if we should. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <Just your glasses. laughs> if we if we just we do that, yay! Okay, you know what the next step is after woolly mammoth. Ready? 
T Rex. You know, we go oh, yeah. directly straight yep. to dinosaurs. Why? We talked about that as pets, like make little T Rexes yeah. for around the house. And you now know? we're just come on. I mean, now what are we doing? Yeah. Why? Well, I have mice, so I want to get rid of the mice, well, and I, I don't like cats, so I'm going to have a hairless cat. Or called does there a really need to be a reason besides just wanting a T Rex on a yeah, leash? Because yeah. we can. Because because I have a big head, and little arms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the guy on the video said, technically, yes, we could make unicorns. Why not? Yeah, because there is a creature that has a singular horn that comes out of the head, and we could crossbreed that yeah. with a horse and make a unicorn. Horse. Okay, woolly mammoths unicorn. are going to help yeah. with the greenhouse Norwal, A Norwal horse. <laughs> That's the best thing. We're going to stomp the no, snow. No, unicorns are not going to do anything. <laughs> Reduce global warming with the unicorn. What but if it was a Pegasus unicorn? All they're going to do is help with Christmas gifts for little girls. That's oh, all. What are, there's no point yeah. to it. No. Alicorn. That's what they're called. Oh. Yeah. I Sorry. Told to oh. ask a question. Okay, yes. Please, from the peanut gallery. <laughs> yeah. Come on in. Yeah. Yeah. So, peanut gallery here. Mm-hmm. What is the difference between us as a species eliminating or causing a species to go extinct and a species eliminating another species? Why is there a difference? Hmm. Ooh. That's a good one because it's it's kind of like natural selection at that point. If a species is causing another. So, what makes humans unique? Probably that we are more efficient in killing. Than most species we, on the planet. We know how to tell time? No. Plausible <laughs> thumbs. <laughs> Way off. Um, because, and I think the, the, I think the answer lies within the fact that we, um, we have moved beyond our basic nature in that we hunt for food. Right. And that we can make an animal go extinct by the processes of human civilization we know Which, how to start fire. Yeah. Well, we're the first species to leave the food chain. Just we know why right, out of it. We know right, right. from wrong. So do other animals. There are animals that know right from wrong. Have you seen a dog that peed on the carpet and it knows it did it? And it's like, oh, yeah, crap, my dog, my dog knows right, when right, they peed enough. on the carpet. And it glows in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And With, now you know yes, that exactly. it peed it on the still carpet. still brim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. <laughs> there it is. There it is. It's purple again. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's like a Pollock painting in here. Oh. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's your pop culture reference for today. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so um, are we going to still continue on with the extinct? Or are we? Is that uh, we can? Yeah. So, so ethically, what do you think? I mean, do we do we bring them back, or do we do we say? I would. So it's like Jurassic Park all over again. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be interesting to know that we could do it. Yep, but then I, th- I think I think it'd be we? like, hey, cool, look, we can do that whenever we want to. And do then, we need to do it now? No, we're going to do it, and then 15 minutes later, we find fidget spinners again. It's just like, whatever. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just whatever we're, you know. Oh, squirrel. Well. Yeah, yeah. Right? whatever it's tickles like, your why? fancy at yeah, that moment. Like, why? Why? Yep. Well, no, I, okay, go ahead. I was going to say, and bringing it back, I mean, we could we could change some things about it, but there's that butterfly effect of it. We bring back the woolly mammoth, and oh, crap, they're eating... Uh, sea lions at an enormous rate and uh, we have no way of stopping them and uh, that just messed with the sea lion population and just crisper the sea lion to have like ultra then, wh- then where's the giant line? sea lion then where's the lion sea I mean then, orca- then orcas die because they can't eat the sea lions and they bring the super orcas, orcas back. Back. super orcas the megalodon yeah. well, the, <laughs> the meg that, yeah. that just popped us that, that's the next band name so yeah. super orcas, super orcas. <laughs> TM. <laughs> but is that so? Is that the dividing line? Then is this con, or, uh, so? There's a term for it. It's ecological disequilibrium. Wow. Uh, which we've could seen. You, could you say that again? Oh, That's like a hundred dollar wow. fancy word. Ecological disequilibrium. Disequilibrium. And we've done that. Get your equilibrium. Go to plenty of so times we, as a species. We we did that uh, uh, in the the national forest. Yep. Um, Yellowstone. Well, Yellowstone. Thank yep. you. They brought in the wolves. Yep. Oh yeah. And they, to fix it. Exactly. So and now but they're running rampant because that was exactly. our way to fix an issue we so caused. We fixed the problem. We fixed well, the problem so and created something five new. Years later, another it's another problem. Exactly. We exactly. So humans. Humans now it's, okay. now it's okay. Hunted down all the wolves in Yellowstone, mm-hmm. yes. thinking, "Okay, good, less uh, less wolves. Everyone's going to be able to create settlements and do whatever now. they need to do." Yeah, right. Hey, cross conversations are tough <laughs> to understand here. I know. I'm sorry. I okay, started it. So humans hunted down all the wolves. We basically exterminated all the wolves from Yellowstone, thinking that was a good thing. And then all of a sudden, deer population, deer population, rabbit population, invasive species cropped up, yeah. which wipes out a lot of the vegetation, which wipes out a lot of other species. And so what did we do? We made a decision because we were able to because we're humans and we brought wolves back into that environment. Mm-hmm. 
And all of a sudden now we've and fixed and that equal yeah. uh, the disequilibrium. ecological disequilibrium. disequilibrium. But wow. then they started having kids. Which is called ED. Those are... Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Let's not call it ED. We'll not call it ED. Yeah. Darn it. <laughs> um, so, but those, so now those original wolves had children and those are now teenagers. Yes, and te- teenage wolves do not hunt for food they can hunt for sport because they just don't know any better because they're adolescents, they're teenagers. Right. Yep. So they just they just kill. And now there's a huge problem. Um, and Mike's talked about it because he has family in Montana that has a ranch. And the problem Speaking is... that, where is he? Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> know. Our mystery guest has not arrived yet. Really? Um, so he's, he hears all the Pops time... from under the table. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what? Oh, you're down there. Hold that. <laughs> More beer for us. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, Anyway, it, yeah, Mike talks about this, how the ranchers are having a huge problem with because uh, wolves are protected species. Unless yep. they're like yeah. directly attacking you, you can't really kill them. Right. They're right. a protected species. So they can't, if they're, if these adolescent wolf packs are taking out their... <laughs> wolf pack. I know, the wolf <laughs> I love pack. man, the wolf pack. <laughs> if they're taking out their herd, sorry, you know, there's not really anything they can do about it. Yeah. So it's that, that territory. creates another problem for ranchers now. Yes. And there's certainly a line you draw. I mean, at the end of the day, we're an invasive species. We've we are invaded a lot. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you're certainly not going to say stop so, so invading. What, what do we know about the woolly mammoth? You know, besides it's, that, the fact that woolly. it was like a, it was exactly like an elephant, but had bigger tusks. It it looks a lot like Mr. Snuffleupagus, but with tusks. Yeah. So what do we know about like what did it eat? You know, what did it go for? Was it bigger than a modern day elephant or yes. was it smaller? A lot bigger than a modern, modern day elephant. Oh, mm-hmm. Not twice the size, but. No, well, also, there's, two, there's, there's, the, <laughs> there's the European elephant and there's the African elephant. Right. <laughs> kind of like the swallows. <laughs> kind of like the swallows. <laughs> yeah. um, can never carry coconuts. Yeah. <laughs> but they can make an argument for bringing this woolly mammoth back. I'm a scientist who's all in favor of bringing back woolly mammoths just because I want to see what it looks but make, like. Make them smaller. Yeah. I think it'd be cool. Certainly. Do a trial but size. But at the same time, let's not pretend. Oh, let's not pretend, how, though, look how cute that it there's is. like a big <laughs> okay. reason to do that. They right. can say that it's to reduce methane or to, no. to solve climate change. No one should buy that. It's because someone wants to make a woolly mammoth and see if they can do yeah, it. Because mm-hmm. it's cool for scientists. Because it's cool to do. Okay, yeah. so as a scientist. It's like a project. Quick sidebar. I think that way about the space program. Why are we spending billions of dollars sending something to Mars? Come on. Really? Yeah. Just sending stuff to Mars for billions of dollars is like bringing the woolly mammoth back. What? What? The, how does that improve our life today? Well, and so, okay, that, to that, we did talk about that. We touched on it a little bit because of uh, I watched an interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson. And on the Joe he Rogan. knows everything. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the face of science. He uh, is. Him, him and Bill Nye. Um, Astrophysics. So what he said was the reason we haven't been back to the moon is because there's no motivation to go to the moon. The first motivation was we got to beat Russia. That was our motivation. Well, we never went. So. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have you That's, on next week. Yeah. <laughs> so next week's show. So, you know, yeah. I just got it out there. So That's so fine. so let's say we uh, we you're right. We, we <laughs> don't need to go to Mars Jeez. right now. Would you miss it? Yeah, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> The but, tides would. I hear it's made of spare ribs. <laughs> but what if, um, because <laughs> of, you know, I mean, we can start arguing global warming on another podcast too, but um, let's say we kill our planet and we have no place to go and we didn't spend any time searching out for other planets that are that we could make inhabitable. In that, well, Elon Musk, Elon Musk is saved because he's got all the spaceships. So I'm just saying. I mean, I just, I'm just thinking that I, we should. That's yeah, true. that too. That's, that's also but true. I just bought pr- a new fridge, so I can't afford a ticket to space. Is this anymore. a good tie-in to parents who can't have kids? Ooh. Okay. Um, well, I want to talk diseases, and then can we do children? Well, yeah. I'm just saying, like, if it, you know, like, oh no, if you're not destined to have kids, then well, we talked about the last two babies. With well, same I, thing. You know, if, if this world's yeah. destined to die, then we're just gonna die and let this. I think our die. underlying, um, the thing we're missing, this this chunk we're trying to find right now is where do we. Where is our spot in improving life? Mm-hmm. And we've, again, we've all admitted we've adjusted that over time. But where do we stand as humans, as a species? Where is our role? Where is our limit in fixing things, whether it's caused by us or not? Whether they're random diseases that just manage to take effect and, and wipe out half of our population, or whether they're us killing off wolves in the Yellowstone. At what point do we say we need to step in? We have the capability. Let's do this. And I think that's that blurry line that's existed since humans 
Yes, existed sure. since humans. Since well, humans. Let, let's let's move on from extinct animals. Let's start moving into like people and all that. I think that's so, the yeah. main reason why yeah. the religion plays a big aspect into yep. this. Okay, so let's. Everybody has such a big problem with it. Before we get into like designer babies, let's talk about like curing diseases. <laughs> We're so Next close. Up, HGTV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Designer babies. So let's. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about uh, using CRISPR to eradicate disease. Like Alzheimer's or Down syndrome and uh, cancer. Can, well, cancer's uh, complex, but yes, um, we could do that. But that's well, the Huntington's problem is, is now. Problem is, we've cell. got a pill for cancer right now. Nobody wants to make that pill. Well, you know what? Because I think that gets political. Cancer companies, or not well, cancer, they don't make any money. Drugs. I mean, it's like one yeah, and done. I, drug companies. Cancer. Fixed. This is this is hard as well. Cancer is a great business. Billions yep. of dollars. I mean, like, why would you? Why would they? Illness even, is a great business. Why would they mm-hmm. let anybody cure that? Mm-hmm. There's so much money being poured into that. Oh, absolutely. To, to not let it be. Uh, that's why we still have cars on the road that get 20 miles a gallon. Are you kidding me? The I was yeah, in high no school. I had a friend that had the Honda, was it a CRX? And it was a two seater. You could put a third person in the back, and the thing got 40 miles to the gallon, and it was a gasoline engine. There was no hybrid engine in it. Yeah. And this is in the 90s, right? You know, that they had this car. And we can't, it's hard to get a hybrid car to get 40 miles to the gallon nowadays. Right. And, and well, I mean, that, that that goes to who killed the electric car, and mm-hmm. it, it died. It's Money. now slowly coming back, but, right. you know, it died for a mm-hmm. while. Oil and gas will never let it happen. Right. I, uh, I do find it interesting. Big with, company. Uh, back to the disease portion. I do find it interesting that, the like, if you break that word apart, uh, disease means dis-ease. To dis yeah, it's, <laughs> you're not at ease. You're It's dis-ease. Mm-hmm. So. Dis-ease. Yeah, I always found that interesting. I like breaking words apart. <laughs> oh. Just like CRISPR, snipping yeah, them apart. Snipping them apart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, what about curing diseases? I mean, and we talked about it a little bit in the last program that uh, at some point it's going to become unethical not to use CRISPR to eradicate disease. Yeah, why not? We've been doing it for decades. Uh, <coughs> on, on a, I'd say a primitive CRISPR back in the say, I don't whenever they started it, but transplants. It's 2012 is when they found it, and it's. Well, I'm, I'm just talking yeah. about like. Uh, the people who say that you know it's wrong, it's whatever. They're the ones that have the bad kidneys, and they're on the list to get a new kidney, or right. getting a kidney transplant. That's right. kind of kind of what that is. Well, and so a now new kidney. Speaking of that directly, they're actually talking about genetically modifying using CRISPR uh, oh, human organs in, to put in pigs. Yeah, so you, you yeah. grow a you grow a human kidney, right? In because a pig. because a pig kidney well, will not it will get rejected. Pig kidney. Exactly. Yeah. Pig, 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 <laughs> So yeah, but you could grow. You could genetically modify either a the pig. Or B, the organ itself, and make that a human organism so it would be less likely to be rejected. Think of how many organs you could store in a woolly mammoth also. <laughs> you could store a lot. A lot. So if you need an excuse, Lots. there's another excuse to create oh, woolly mammoths. Man. That's so many. That's gonna, you you lift true. up the hair on the woolly mammoth. Is that an ear? Oh, oh my gosh. Like tiny T-Rex. Someone's it's nose. That. That's oh, like a human man. arm that's off the side of him. But, hey, Put, the, like, the Put the fur back. Like a billion years from now, it's going to be real. Put its own fur back. <laughs> Like a billion years from now, there's going to be like uh, like future alien generations digging up woolly mammoths. Why does this woolly mammoth have twelve hearts? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? The scientists were bored. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that brings to mind uh, what size is a woolly mammoth heart? So, like uh, an elephant, heart. an elephant heart. Like you were just saying, pretty big. Pretty, you know, I would think an elephant heart, just for the sheer size of the animal, mm-hmm. would have to pump a lot more blood. Mm-hmm. What's the size of a woolly mammoth's heart? I know how you big. Think uh, comparable, right? Yeah, have, like the size of my head. Do you see the picture they had on Reddit of the uh, blue whale heart? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was. You can get a pretty big head. A, a human can fit through a blue whale heart. So yeah, they can like swim through the channels of a yep. blue whale heart. It's crazy. Wow, it's got to be a, large. Yeah. Wow. The, well, the blue whale is the largest animal on earth. Yep, it's a so. big boy. Yeah. Um. So, but then, okay. <laughs> so we can all agree. On disease. I'm going to bring this train back on the track if it kills well, me. Right. So we, we can all agree that it's, it's okay, but what? where do we draw that line as to yeah, what is a disease? Because here's, well, here, because this is, is the d- argument. Is this dwarfism is the argument that a disease? shuts people up. This is yeah. the one that scares people and they stop talking about. Well, now we're just playing God. This is where mm-hmm. this all comes from. Well, and that's why we're talking this about this. This is what we're getting to, and right. that's the line that That's just, the God gene. You're going to take it away, and it's going to screw up everything. Now you're playing God. Right. You know? We've been playing God. You're the creator of... Yeah. It's, it's been of, a thing You life. are now the new creator if of human. You, okay, if you want to get technical, let's talk about all the things that we should not have done and all of this, all this CRISPR stuff. Like, let's just talk about Jesus' miracles, the things mm-hmm. he performed... That's could we even do those things? That's kind of like what we're talking. He just he took water and the wine. He took uh, three 
fish. If I had that ability, and that he, would be awesome. Where did right. he get? Where, how did we get? How did we feed five thousand? G- what did he feed them? Those are GMOs. Or are they? Or the blind healed the blind man. That must have been CRISPR. He like totally healed. He changed healed. Your and they're, he they're changed testing CRISPR right now for that. He, yeah. he did those things and things that we could never replicate. Mm-hmm. So what are we arguing about here? It's it just there just needs to be regulations on them because obviously somebody's yeah. going to take it off on this evil tangent. Which why don't you that now would be a good point where you talk about the scientific community with the regulations and all that that are already in place that have well, been in place for a long time. And I know that there are rogue countries and rogue you know whatever. Dr. Evil and, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, yeah, the super geniuses and all that. <laughs> <laughs> so you last you me. Uh, actually, now would be a good time to segment into the next beer because okay, yeah. we're, Let's do it. we're kind of hitting this at the top of the hour, so that's great. So why I have been pouring, because I'm kind of like that guy. Do I need more cups? I don't know. I thought I brought no, we're more. I brought small cups out for everybody. Just take your water glass and rinse one out, and you're good. Oh, there you go. There you think but of. Why I'm pouring, because there's so much sediment in the bottom of these. Can you see that? Oh, it looks yeah. like chocolate milk. If I pass the bottle That's around, what I was ch- tasting, chocolate milk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Imperial Stout. Chocolate milk? Oh, man. That is great. That's chocolate cake. This, oh, that's right. This and is, now that is tainted. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, Bill Cosby. Uh, poor guy. Not poor, poor guy. I was he gonna, did whoa, it to whoa, himself. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah. He did it to himself. <laughs> it's just a natural saying. You just kind of like yeah, say that. Poor guy. Yep. It was so good. All right. So what's with the stout here? What's the... Same brewery, Great Divide in Denver. Uh, this is a eight-year-old well, Imperial stout. Hold, hold that up. Turn that around so we can... Which way? I don't know. The camera way. I was going to say, this facing the camera. Just come on, Vanna. Oh, can I not? Can you hold I'm it up? I'm zooming in as qui- as close as I can. There we go. Can you track this? Track this. Stop. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't track that. Tracking. But. Tracking. There we go. All right. Cool. Well, that's good. Sounds good to me. Imperial stout. So when they come out super fresh, they could be pretty fruity. They have a lot of um, prunes, figs, dark raisins. And then figs. over time, they can kind of turn into the uh, really boozy, chocolatey. So it starts out kind of like fruit and nutty? Not really nutty. Fruits and figs? I don't know. It, oh, I was like, is that? I don't. I missed that movie. No, like just, movie no, no, no I movie love, reference. The only thing is, this is the only wild card. Uh, this batch from 2011 is known to have infection in it. Wow. Ooh. Another eight-year-old beer. So it's like, this, this, this could, could be awesome, or this could be like... Uh, when mm-hmm. You said vinegar earlier, but a good vinegar... This this would be bad vinegar. So we are oh. actually flipping a coin here. Interesting. All right, well, good thing I brought back up. So you don't know if this will be good or not. I don't know. This is known infected batch, but if it's good, then uh, we hit the jackpot. And we need to cleanse our palates. So, <laughs> Brian, you brought a hop. Did I got a six pack upstairs? <laughs> it's one of my favorite logos. That's Which I I think it's great because it's a it's it's a four point nine. So it's it's less than five point oh. A session. Which it's it's it's. You know, you could have a few of them and you're okay. You know, you don't get wasted off of them. That's a, that's a new one. Wasted. Yep. I like getting slippy. That's that's slippy, new, slippy, yeah. slippy, slippy and wasted. Wasted. Mm-hmm. When you start slurring your speech and you get slippy. I just figured our brothers have your own language. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Muckle picky. <laughs> 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 no, Brian, that's off of a movie again. I know, I know. <laughs> I was just trying to kind of want to lay you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's also from a movie. Exactly, All same right. movie. Uh, no, Marco Picky. That was from um, oh. Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Where am I going with this? This is fine. Oh yeah. You doing okay over there? Get up out of that chair. That felt nice. Thanks for joining us on the peanut gallery. Are you having fun? Okay, or can you hear us all? Okay, is the conversation I can't hear you. good? Beer's good. What? Beer, well, hey, what? Beer is good. See, got got is- it. God is great. It's an like easy show. You could have literally sat right here in the seat this and like been my, fine. This is my fourth time on. This is what we do. This is yeah. what I do. You nice. can just hang out. <laughs> we talk beer and nerdy stuff. So. You're, right. you're actually drinking uh, good beer out of a still glass. Mm. <laughs> All right. And eat beautiful cheese. Brian, yeah. have you, you really cheese. haven't got any well, of this. My, cheese would be good with this as yeah, well. My yeah, arms are not long enough to reach that cheese. Thank you so much, sir. Get some of that. Just make yourself a little pile. These are nice, clean tablecloths. So go right ahead. Can I? uh, No, turn off the lights and let's see if it glows in the dark. (laughs) (laughs) Straight from the factory. Uh, (laughs) Mm. Right? There's not much of a. I'm not getting a whole lot of nose on this one. Not even. I do. It's it's pretty well oxidized. Yep. Um. Wow. This one actually is an infected one. So we there's like this, there's uh, some bitterness and we it. get this really astringent, uh, like mouth puckering, almost like yep. a um, like uh, rubbing alcohol. Yeah. 
So you look at zoom in on Britt's face. Yeah. <laughs> I got to. See, this is normally sour beers to me. It's just yeah, I get the same a, exact. This face. is not supposed to be sour. It's this not almost to be sour, yeah, no. but it's um. It tastes like a stout sour. Yeah, like with sour milk. So this is like mm-hmm. a lactobacillus. Yeah. I'm yeah. So I'm mm-hmm. gonna reach in here. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And we're gonna go on to the next one. <laughs> and that's 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 the life of. That's what happens with yeah. uh, aging beers. All just, right. Just like that. What do we have here, Britt? Uh, this is like I said the uh, the crooked stave. S T A V E. Uh, it is their IPA. It's six point eight. Uh, they have it on tap. They're at Casual Pint. I do recommend checking them out. Uh, they have an awesome, awesome, awesome rewards program. Like a triple uh, awesome? Yeah, no triple awesome. Uh, right. So like, if you just go under their regular rewards program, which is actually free, you get money back. Mm-hmm. So like, you could accrue dollars. Um, but you can, but you mm. can. Uh, I know I had to say it twice because I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, you can get into there. It's it, it costs like twenty bucks a month, but you get ten percent off of everything. Uh, there's special nights where there's growler fills for fifty percent off. You know, like there's you get a T-shirt, you get this growler for free. You know, it's it's a thing. I strongly recommend getting into that sort of thing. Where are they at? Uh, they're right in. <laughs> A small town in, in a city, city. <laughs> yes. countryside village. <laughs> that's a, that's an old commercial for country air. I'm not yeah, as old as you. Sorry. I know. Wait, hold on. Wait, we're the same age. Then we determine we're like months apart. I should have poured this actually in this cup here. We actually have one more cup. You could pour, which cup? Which cup? The broken cup. There's there. You've got mm-hmm. one right there. Oh, yeah. I will piggyback on yeah. casual pint. Could have done so. That. Sabrina and I were on the tapped, and we're closing in five six thousand check ins. So it's, it's really hard to go somewhere. And find something new. I have but, more. But so every time we go to Casual right. Pint, we always find a full flight of something new. Five, six. Wow. Times. Yeah. That's, that's They've got a something. lot. They have, uh, let's see here, 24 taps, I think. So, And they're always changing them so out. So my check is in the mail as well. <laughs> so you're part of the free program. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, you're checking the mail. I get I get what you're saying. We're, we're pimping them out. I, uh, I told them I said they should watch. I was there uh, last night. Uh, I was there this afternoon. Uh, I was there two days ago. Uh, if that's corrected, that's three days in a row. Do you have your own chair yet? <laughs> uh, you know, it's it, the thing is, uh, no, where it, in proportion to my house, they're all, they're a mile road, away. Yeah, yeah, they're one mile away. If that, it's more like oh, jeez, here it's comes like a mile. Away. <laughs> Reg's walking. He's heating up. Everybody, look away. Uh, there's there's three or four of us that go there on a daily basis. <laughs> daily? Yeah, not a daily. I'm not there on a daily basis. You just said daily. Just the last. Three I said days. three or four of us. Mm-hmm. I'm not referring to myself. <laughs> All right. So with this one, yeah. What is with the Crooked Stave? What was the name of this one again? Uh, it's just the RIPA. Oh. It's a six point eight. So speaking of sours, Crooked Stave is very well known for their sour program. Oh my gosh. Lemony, lemony, lemony. Oh yeah, lemony yep. snickets. There. Lemony snickets. Very hoppy. Uh, citra has a lot of citra hops. Yep. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little mosaic. In fact, I see some his citra hops right up on top. <laughs> you just see some love, hops floating around there. I love chewing on my just, beer. Just kidding, just kidding. They were bubbles. <laughs> oh, this is good. But didn't that look like hops to you? Very right hazy. Very, oh, I wow. had to like tap mine down. To... Yeah, you're gonna want some of this. Here, it was really good. Yeah, we've here, got we've here, got more here, 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 Mitchell. Right here, Mitchell. There's a cup right there, and she can. We've got a whole nother crowler of this. All right. So while he's while he's, while he's doing that, we're gonna get back on yeah, track there's, here. There's more cups. I'm going to bring it back on track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we've talked about um, curing diseases. We're all okay with that. Curing diseases is a good thing with CRISPR. Yeah. Uh, what about enhancements to the human body, like eye color, hair color, muscle tone, uh, intelligence level? Which ones matter and which ones Where's the don't? line? Yeah. I mean... I'm going to destroy this line. If we're enhancing... Here, but I'm going to try to figure enhance. out where we're at. Enhance. <laughs> enhance. Enhance. Yes. <laughs> Just like CSI. We're going to enhance this photograph. Because we can agree if you go to a doctor and you're about to have a kid and they say, we can ensure that your kid is not going to have muscular dystrophy or Alzheimer's or obesity, mm-hmm. no parent, no, you would think, no parent would say, no, I don't want that. Right. Right. For right. the most part. Right. No, I want my kid to be fat. Now, <laughs> you know? if they also add to the end of that, also... Your kid's going to be intelligent. Do you want that? Well, yeah. Would you ever say no? No, I wouldn't say no. no. I would say yes, please. Thank you. Right. Right. 
All right, so um, just press the red button. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make it easier, please. Take the, the blue button. pill. So, Brian, what did you find? Did you find anything on like the religious aspect or different uh, religions or denominations? What they have to say about CRISPR? Thanks, not, Logan. Not specifically CRISPR, but I do think or that genetic engineering. I got a Pope Francis quote. If you want one, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. On gene editing. All right. Ooh, that's good. So now I got to find it. Um. So he says, I encourage scientists to persevere in uh, your search for truth, the scientist search, uh, for we ought never to fear truth nor become trapped in our own preconceived ideas, but welcome new scientific discoveries with an attitude of humility, though he went on to remind people of the, um, to caution us of this throwaway culture of life, which is, I think, more stemming from uh, embryonic stem cells and mm-hmm. just throwing away objects or people as objects to use just for a bigger before you start on that uh, we did have a comment that you need a little more gain on your mic so we need so i already said thank you logan <laughs> yeah thank you brian's man. not on it <laughs> oh i thought it was like some wolverine right no now. he's not with it no i got it brian right. okay i i see those comments pop up but they All go right. away from me they stay on your screen which okay. is kind of nice so um the only thing with like religion and all that, a lot of people talk about just messing with the human genome and just playing God. As far as the religious aspects, that's about as much as we see. We don't really see anything in the text as far as gene editing because that's not in the religious text, gene editing. When it comes to... Um, I'll agree with that. They it, never said yeah. that you should splice our genes. That is never written. Yeah, they I mean, they t- the the closest line. they came was you know your your body is a temple. I mean, it's it's a temple of God, and God made it, and He made you in His image or their image, depending on your version of the Bible. Oh my gosh! <laughs> 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 so, um, if if you take it from that aspect, I guess that if 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 He made us in their or His image, depending on your version of the Bible, then. Um, if you take that at face value, that we were already made perfect, then where where is the perfect line? I guess. <laughs> Boom. So <laughs> tell me that's where you throw the spice you, down. You, yeah. <laughs> Ready? I'm about to pick the spice back up, insert in the pot. So when Lazarus died, what gene did he just have? When he died? Yeah, it was called the dead gene. He just died. Yeah, and you talked about this before, that they're trying to get death on the illness list, that we could cure it. <laughs> yeah, so, so you, know, weird. you know what his genetic <laughs> so disposition, weird. you know what happened to him? He died. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know who altered his lifestyle of being dead? Yeah, sure did. God. God didn't like, oh, you know, cured his illness or his cough or his cancer. He's like, you know what? Remember that time when you weren't breathing and you're mm-hmm. dying? Yeah, not so much. Now you're alive again. No. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and now we have a problem with trying to, you know, make somebody more muscular or curing some disease. Like, it's just. But don't we already that's do? A, that's don't a we already very do that with, valid like a point defibrillator though. when someone's dead and boom, they're alive? I mean, pretty as instantaneous as I mean, that. Is, is that the argument? Is that, hey, we're all just. That's also a very good argument. I like of, that. Like, whatever's going to happen is going to happen, and we just, we just let it go. Like I don't understand. Like what? What is? We have the ways of perfecting that. And, I want to know and solving that. I'm but. more interested in: is it a certain denomination or is it a certain group? Like what? What is the argument against this? Is it more of just a, a fear of taking messing it out of control? Because that happens with anything. Let's. And I don't think that's necessarily a religious argument. I think that's I think kind of where I, you're going with it. Yeah, it's just. But this, if you want to go back, oh well, this is not what God wants. I mean, like that's what. That's how Jesus got hit people's attention. Yeah. When he's going out and preaching to the masses, like that's that was his thing. He just did it. I mean, he just all these. Let's just go back to the miracles on these things. The things that we're doing today and the things we're talking about are nothing compared to what he did Mm -hmm. and his miracles. That's and like we're just we're just talking about we're splitting hairs. It's a valid argument, but the the I mean the fact remains that you're you're talking like Jesus. There there was no one else like Jesus. Any any translation, any translation, any. Any, whatever you want to talk about, any denomination, any religion, it's still there. Even the ones that don't believe in Jesus still know that he was a man and he still performed miracles. He still did that. And yet we're still arguing with what we're, what we're doing today. I think why we're doing it in scientists, we're not doing it to make things worse. I think it's cool that they're figuring it out. I yeah. think it's neat that we're, they're we're, trying new things if something's to not progress right, us. We're trying to make things better or right or healthier. That's the general idea. Of course, we're hmm. going to take everything to the extreme. 
Mm -hmm. And that was another reason why he was on earth is to kind of lead us that, hey, you know, if let's take those gifts, those talents, those things that we have and use them for those good things. All right. Make things so, healthier. I like how you said yeah. that. You what's, know, what's your take on vaccines? <laughs> Right. Oh, like, your eyes just uh, got big. I wish I could have put those on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just kidding. That's, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a whole nother top. Let's leave. skipping over so that So the one. Hippocratic Oath, though, I mean, yep, a, yeah. a major part of that is this idea of, I'm going to try to not slaughter this, primum non nocere. Bless you. First, thank you. <laughs> your Latin is amazing. Uh, it's it's on point. On fleek, as they say now. <laughs> oh. uh, you know, We're middle school teacher. I got it down. <laughs> uh, first... <laughs> First, do no harm, right? That's, okay. That is the scientific and medical uh, for okay. years. I'm glad you brought that the up. The background of what anyone does is first, do no harm. And you have to ensure, theoretically, mm-hmm. as a scientist or as a medical practitioner or as anyone really theoretically who has any See, ethics. It points to me. That you're I'm not, not going to. Yeah. Anybody. This <laughs> medical practitioner <laughs> over here. Uh, sure. That you're not messing Five it up by arms. trying to fix it. <laughs> okay. Right? And I'm glad you brought that up because doctors take the Hippocratic oath. Yep. Scientists do not. Now, no, I'm not saying that it's part of the bioethics um, uh, kind of staple of things we need to do. But isn't that when, when you become a doctor, that's when you take the Hippocratic yep. Oath? Yep. But like as a scientist, like you don't have to take an oath like that. Now, I know you're working for good. But, right. But you don't have to. We have a whole, there's like a, there's an army of people that look at you angrily during <laughs> your uh, proposal for a budget. Uh-huh. And if it's not aligned to that, they're going to just laugh at you and say, get away. So it's your it's a it's your, an ethics council is what you go through. Okay, all right. It's e- it would be much easier to take an oath and call it good than have <laughs> to talk with this entire organization about every single thing you do. So okay, which is a good thing. It's a pain in the the butt for scientists, I suppose, in a good way. Like it's a good thing that we have that, but you know we could take that pain in the butt. And right. We could fix that. I know <laughs> so. with CRISPR. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is an entire and it'd be like gelin. Are you gelin? Just, <laughs> just like a pellet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, all right, so we're gonna take it to the extreme, and we're gonna start getting into designer babies here. I mean, we've talked about uh, enhancements. <laughs> <laughs> I just like designer babies. <laughs> all right, so so here. I want uh, blonde hair. I want blue eyes. Are you from? Are you Swedish? I want Swedish. Yeah. I want one more arm because that would be <laughs> much better. <laughs> Oh, yes. that's going to cost you extra. <laughs> but think about it. But you could have that. Mm-hmm. I would enjoy one extra arm. Oh, a yeah. lot of things. A lot of things. Except for when I actually put on <laughs> any of my shirts. You're then, and pet except for shirts. Uh, big. I've been doing two things at once, and I'm like... <sighs> big clothing Can industry? Can I call somebody to like, help industry? out? Yeah. Yeah, I get big it. clothing industry would love to have extra arms to Another sell hole. new clothes. Yeah, yeah we got to sell new Less clothes, Less fabric. <laughs> Or more oh, fabric, right. one of the two. Oh, all right, so <laughs> train derailed. Fix right. it, Brian. It's all right. So, so did we? Did we just move from like the miracle of birth to hey, we could fix that? We could. We kind of did that though a hundred years ago, right? With IVF. Well, that's yeah, with for, IVF for with, uh, yeah. improving um, sanitation conditions. We've steadily been improving those. We just now have a more accurate leap in. Okay. Do you think that God thinks this is right? So my take on that is like if he's looking down on us and going, you know, I created human to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Now you're messing with it. Is he like, hey, cool. They figured it out. Or is he like, shouldn't be messing with that. So my take on that is God gave us a brain. They did. He did. And we are using a mm-hmm. God-given talent to further humanity for a good cause. Right. right. Usually, right. there are going to be those that don't. What we perceive as a good cause. God gave right. us a brain, but people still do drugs. You know, like <laughs> he also gave us free will. Right. Right. Okay. It's the kind of you know. free will. And would you say that the Paradox. drug problem in America is the majority of America or not? I mean, no, it's not the majority. So it's... then we're going to talk about the scientific okay. community. Do uh-huh. you think people doing things for a bad purpose is the majority of the scientific community? Or do you think that it, the majority of the scientific community is doing things for a good pur- purpose? Doing good things for a good purpose. I I, I, I will agree with that. Uh, the Pew Research Poll. Ooh. I did my research. Look at you. Pew Research Poll. 76 or 79%. Uh, confidence in military, 76% confidence in science. It's kind of that same mm-hmm. iteration. Um, just to kind of put a level on this, 27% in government. So <laughs> about where everyone assumed it'd be. Maybe a little bit higher. I've always Maybe loved, a little bit higher. I've always loved that quote that, um, you know, no one has ever trusted this phrase. 
I'm here from the government. I'm here to help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Close the door. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I, I think that uh, from a, the perspective. So you think he'd be okay with it? I think that. God. So, yeah. I'm, I, you know, I, we all can't answer for him, but I mean. I would. That, that, that is our topic for conversation tonight is the, the religious aspect of the deal. And that gets into, I mean, there's, so the religious aspect I'm going to go with is if we can make better people and better is going to be a, a relative term because what's a better person really? That's, that's a line well, that we need um, to discuss, but beyond that, that's, viruses, you okay, know, okay. That, that'd be, that'd be the one yeah. number one thing viruses. It was really viruses. a rhetorical question, but, uh, so let's get into the religious aspect of things in life are difficult, right? Mm-hmm. So if we make a perfect person as humans perceive a perfect person and everything is easy, then what about the trials in life? Because trials in life make you who you are and they make your experiences in life. If you have difficulty in life, then you are more equipped to deal with harsh times in life. And if you don't have harsh times in life because you're a perfect person, then then Sorry. what about where what does that say about humanity kind of like epigenetics right i mean you yeah you, you're simulating those but that's hardships. that's a lot slower process than CRISPR is doing, sure talking yep. about yep i agree so that that's that was my religious aspect of it like if we're going to create a perfect society then what happens to the trials of life you would assume we would still have trials even if we were a perfect species but if, if we, yeah, can, yeah, the, the fun as, part as about soon, yeah, as soon as you make you it the one, best, there is going to be something wrong something with else. it. You're like, yep. oh, yeah, and we forgot is, to make his eyes blue, yeah. <laughs> or you know, his oops. arm fell off. Wow, that was <laughs> didn't see that. We one had coming. everything else good except for the arm part. <laughs> yeah, right. And there's nothing perfect. It's never going to be perfect again. It happened six, seven thousand years ago when sin entered the world. Original sin right. was mm-hmm. always there. Adam and Eve, and that was it. So it will never get back to perfect. And there's nothing we could do about it. The whole religion aspect is when you talk about what God thinks, God already dealt with that. So he had a conundrum because sin entered the world. That was not his plan. So we we modified his plan when we decided to be stupid and go against his will. So when he hmm. solved that, he brought Jesus back, and he fixed that. Okay. He made it no longer. All we wanted was something from the tree of knowledge. Yeah, because we thought we knew better. And that's yeah. what we're doing now, making many T-Rexes and more mammoths with six arms. But there's no need for that. It, when it comes down to the whole thing about Christianity in general is, is it a salvation issue? If not, it doesn't really matter. It's just more for conversational pieces. So none of this has to do with the salvation issue. Jesus came to talk about, hey, I want you to believe in me mm-hmm. because, hey, look what I did. You are all bound for really bad stuff mm-hmm. but i fix it there's nothing you did so from here on out like if we're just trying to improve life i'm sure he's like hey why did it take you so long yeah, <laughs> yeah. thank you for finally it getting six thousand years i wrote the entire code for you yeah. i put it so, all in the stars yeah. for you yeah, i told you a long time ago and you're yeah. just now figuring this out i don't think he cares it's just way to go it, genius it doesn't matter like how we get there he just wants us to get there and it's just a matter of he the bottom line, if you talk about religion, if we want to bring that in, I know it's been a touchy subject for a year and a half, and it's, it's tough it, to talk about. It is. It could turn it's, off a lot of people. It's polarizing. It's yep. very polarizing. Certainly. Yep. But the bottom line is he just... We're messing with the God genes is what we're doing. Yep. He just wants us to believe in him and follow him, and that's it. Now, how we get there... Yeah, would he have put it there if he didn't expect us to find it? Find it? Exactly, and use our brains. But then again, did he put have, the apple there? But we're not puppets on the string. We still like the free will part. Still, right, that's a big part of it. We still make our own choices. But you know, even and that's another com- very confusing thing. And we take things way too literal in the Bible, and we misinterpret it. Like, oh, well, he knows the plans that he has for us. Like we have it all planned out. Yeah, but where does free will fall? We still that? have free will. Mm-hmm. We can just, it's not like, oh, I don't have to worry about tomorrow because God's gonna like put this little umbrella over me. And that's that's not. It's just yeah. That's where you get like. 45 different denominations because right. somebody takes one verse and this applies to science or anything else somebody <laughs> sees one sentence and sees one thing and they interpret it 84 different ways and they've got all these different branches and denominations the original clickbait i've the got original clickbait. so i've got something on that so you, you mentioned free will and there's also the predestination arguments on that and my wife and i were actually just having this uh, discussion yesterday and she's like i don't understand how god can s- god knows the plans that he has for you and to set up your life and he puts free will in there and you can make those decisions. And I said, well, I mean, if you think of God as a 
uh, a, a, a higher dimensional being and he can actually see every single option. And there's a video on YouTube and I forget um, what did, but if you look up YouTube and you do uh, uh, like explanation of dimensions, th- there's a, there's a point where like there's infinite possibilities. And if, if God as a higher being can see those infinite possibilities for your life, he may have a plan for you at the end. It just may, are you going to take the direct path to it? Are you going to take this left path? Are you going to, are you going to circle back twice and then get to it? I mean, the, yeah. He can see all options. Because his sense of humor is way different. If you take that, that verse literal, <laughs> the one, the verse that's in everybody's household that says, you know, for I know I have the plans I have for you. Jeremiah. That was in 11. Jeremiah. That was specifically for a certain reason. He was talking, I believe, that was talking about getting the Israelites to the promised land or something. It had something to do with that specific situation. But then we're like, oh, that has to mean like with, you know, should I buy a house tomorrow or should I drive to work? It's, I mean, no, it's We not. wandered the <laughs> desert for 40 years. Yeah. Are you kidding me? That's not how it works. <laughs> but should I buy the house? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm just going to sit here until yeah. God tells me. Well, Ooh. that's the interpretation. You know, it's just. So, oh, I've got one on that one. So there's the the God, the uh, God's plan, you know, the God will save thing. So. Let's say there's a um, there's this uh, woman. She owns a home in a city, and it floods, and she's very religious. And so, mm. the city floods. She gets on the roof. And do you know the story? Yeah, 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 yeah. sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, where I'm going to say it anyway. No, say it for anyway, those it's that a good one. Yeah. I like it. So she gets on the roof, and she um, she says, "Oh God, will will save me from the flood." Well, her house gets completely flooded. She's up on the roof, and some people in the neighborhood come by with a boat, and. Um, they said, hey, do you want to come with us? Nope. No, no. God will save me. Okay, so then the National Guard comes by, and um, they're like, hey, come with us. We will save you. She says, no, God will save me. So finally, a helicopter comes by and uh, says, come on, you know, you got to evacuate here. Your, your house is going to be completely underwater. Your roof is going to be underwater. No, God will save me. So then the flood waters rise. She dies. She gets up to heaven, and know, she's like, joke. she's like, Hey, God, why did you not save me? He's like, I sent a boat. I sent the National <laughs> Guard. I sent the helicopters. You, you know? didn't take them. Right. Yeah. All right. So this is going to earn me a thousand points and because my mom just texted me. She's watching. That's awesome. Oh, so, that's great. Hi, mom. Here's the quote, and I believe it because mm-hmm. it's, it's, it says, uh, she says, God doesn't care where you've been. He cares where you're going. So it's like, it doesn't matter how we get there. In fact, you know what? If we all become superhumans and we live longer, that gives us more of a chance to, to preach the word. That gives us more of an opportunity to do good for others and show God's love to other people. Whatever the case, you fill in the blank of that gives us more opportunity to do whatever. Just whatever it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, fine. You know, whatever. Okay, so. Like you said, blank. So like from that. the religious aspect, specifically from Scripture, what if we start living past 120 years? Because and I'm, I, I want to put the religious... And then my skin that, is falling off. That, that was a curveball. I like that one. So, because it hasn't happened. Right. So here, here's the, religi- ah, the man, religious text you got me on that, that, I'm gonna, that I'm gonna bring up is Genesis 6 3. Yeah. And uh, I guess it depends on the version of the Bible. This one I'm taking what, from... Which one? Uh, I think this is either NLT or NIV version. Those I can't are the remember. the only two I read from. So. Okay. <laughs> so this one, Genesis 6, 3 says, Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be 120 years. Ooh. Period. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So that means from this text. We've already if, overshot if, that by a couple of years. Uh, well, that, and that's been a, a debate. There was one person that made it, but they couldn't really prove when prove. she was actually born because the birth certificates at that point all right, all right, all right. were all handwritten. Fair enough. So if we use CRISPR and we start living past 120 years, we're breaking his rule. What does that mean for scripture and religious texts? Yeah, come on up. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. Social Security. Yeah. You get yeah. less yeah. money. Yeah. My insurance is going to become ex- yeah. more expensive. We're, we're going to get into the social aspects of living past 120 yeah. years, but right My now I want to. insurance is going. Yeah. 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 I hop will increase the discount up to yeah. 65 years instead of 55. Right? Yeah. At least. So yeah, I want. I we will definitely get into the social aspects of living to 150 years, but let's let's talk specifically the religious aspects because if Scripture says, and there's a lot of people that take Scripture literally, if we cannot live past 120 years according to Scripture and we start living beyond 120 years, what does that mean for religion? Does literal Scripture interpretation still... Yes, but... Is that's it relevant today? To some people. But the, sure. th- the thing to me is... 
how many times has the Bible been translated and to how many versions has sure. it been translated? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the original text was so a, a language we don't even speak anymore. The closest right. we have is Hebrew. Right. And so, unless you're speaking Hebrew, you're not Aramaic. even... Well, yeah, Ar- Greek. But mm-hmm. the Aramaic mm-hmm. is not even spoken anymore, is it? I don't think so. so um, the people don't know uh, their... He's got the tablets. Mayan right tablets <laughs> on my wall right now. No, you just, have the Dead Sea Scrolls on your wall. <laughs> I have my tablets on Why are we not reading those? Just saying. I, we don't have the Rosetta Stone for them. Yeah. <laughs> so There's, you, you know, in the middle of the Mayan Cost calendar, dollar, ma- so. man carrying child. I have that over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boom. Yep. So interpretations or literal tra- uh, To me, it kind of depends on not only Old and New Testament, but also books. When you talk about Revelation, mm-hmm. you obviously can't take that literally. I almost want to zoom right. in on these tablets um, here. And that's where you get a whole different, and I might even say denomination, you get a whole different religion on that. Mm-hmm. It's a little edgy, but mm-hmm. you get Jehovah Witness. There's a city yeah. coming down out of the clouds. Almost sounds well, like an awful lot of like well, a spaceship. Jehovah Witness. Mm-hmm. You get you know, 144,000. Right, yeah. Is that a literal cutoff number? Because that seems like a very small heaven to me. It is. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> what if Or are those the managers of heaven? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> There's a giant flow chart yeah. somewhere. Yeah, exactly. There's a pyramid scheme. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Madoff. Oh, uh, and we just pissed off all the Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a conversation. I've I've talked to many Mormons and Jehovah, any mm-hmm. other religion or denomination. I've had conversations. I'm mm-hmm. I've never said they're wrong. I've never said anything. I'm just like I I but I question them because a lot of times when they go talk to people, they either a cuss them out and tell them to go away, or don't want to talk about them. I'm like. I want to know why you believe what you do. And exactly. Sudden, they, this is what they do when I ask them. Like, well, why? And they go. Uh, nobody's ever asked me that. Yep. They don't no. know what to say. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, I'm curious. Because, because that's the way they were raised. That's what we're, you Why know. is it 144,000? Why? Do My you parents different... taught me that, so that's just yeah. the way I do it. Why do Mormons have three planets? Why is this? Why Why do Catholics believe that? Uh, why do they pray to Mary? Why is this? I mean, there's. I have a thousand whys. Mm-hmm. Um, By far the most interesting conversation I've ever had was inviting the Mormon into my house. I've done that. Mm-hmm. I've done that. Highly recommended. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's an interesting uh, in in my human moment, in have. my job, in my day life, I actually get to experience a lot of um, the Judeo Christian religions, and I get to converse with a lot of multiple Judeo Christianity religions, mm-hmm. and even some that Christian religions don't consider. Can you guess who he does? Or who he is? <laughs> <or> who <laughs> does? <laughs> but um, I have, I always have those questions, you know, from scripture, and I even have with with uh, with Christian pastors. I still have questions about the Apostles' Creed and all that. And you know, if, if Jesus uh, is coming again to judge the living and the dead, and He hasn't judged anybody, then then who's in heaven? Those are, right. those are some questions. Those are honest questions. Like yeah. if this is scripture and this is the Apostles' Creed, we say it at every church service. Then why do we believe this? Um, that's not to say that it shakes my faith. It's just I have questions, right? And I think questioning. Um, you know, Mormonism or uh, Jehovah's Witness, that's not a bad thing. We just want to know. Yeah, and I'm not trying to offend them. I mean, that's a fact. Mm-hmm. That number is a real number to them. 144,000, yeah. So I got a good... I got a good quote from you. Please do. Also, yeah, right. From uh, me or for me? Fahad Ali, <laughs> a Muslim geneticist. Mm-hmm. You need to be skeptical in order to be correct. That rings true in both his research and his faith. Oh, trust but verify. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that is... um. So that and that's awfully close to Thomas Jefferson's quote, right? Do you know which one I'm going to bring up on that? I one? have a feeling. Yeah. So um, the uh, the quote from Thomas Jefferson is questioned with boldness even the very existence of God. For yep. if there be a God, then he surely he he um, favors honest questions over blindfolded faith. Right. Okay. So I I teach confirmation, and uh, I think being real and raw. I think that's why I wasn't favored. At my college to go into the program, it was <laughs> is because you are I, too real. You're asking well, the wrong question. I, I pushed a lot of buttons, but the thing was, I think I everybody was in their their comfort zone, and I wanted to push my other comfort zone, which I think Jesus did, Martin Luther did, everybody did. Yep, that are well known in that. And so I do that with my seventh and eighth graders. I push them. I tell them I want you to question everything you read in the Bible, and that's a good thing. I don't know why people piss their pants when they hear that and get scared. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, we just, we just have to sit there and believe. no. When he says, when Jesus tells you that he wants you to think about him, you need to challenge your mind, challenge your heart, and like, you need to ask why. You need to question it. Questioning is not always a bad thing, but you need to know why you believe what you believe, whether it's right. CRISPR or anything we've talked about today or weeks before or now. Like, when you, you know, if you're searching, 
But if you're reading the Bible, speaking of question it. Speaking of searching, right now they're looking for the Garden of Eden. You know, oh, where they've life, been looking for the know. Garden of Eden for decades, well, centuries, it's, really. But it's, it, they're never going to find it. Because uh, once least. they find it, then it's then then we're done. But Maybe, oh, is that the end of the game? <laughs> that's it. Yeah. They found it, then we're done. We did it. Level up. Wait, but I want to buy Level the two point one. Oh, man. It's, yeah. it's 99 cents for the extension. Yeah. Oh, no. uh, yeah. Too much. Oh, Little did we know that it was all of this was pay to play. So I'm not paying a dollar. I'm going to get it for free. What if the Garden of Eden was Atlantis? Ooh. In the Bermuda Probably Triangle. Probably not. In the Bermuda <laughs> Triangle. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> just gonna, just throw them all the in trifecta. there. trifecta. <laughs> oh, man. And the triangle trifecta. Oh, I know. Man. That's why nailed I said it. it. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Man. You killed it. Yeah. So. Nailed it right there. All right. So um, we didn't really answer the question oh. of religion. No, yes. Yes. We kinda went yes is the answer. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. 12. <laughs> 32. Um, 33? No. 42. Ooh. 42. Man, you just went there. All right. The the price is right. You got to go all over. So we we talked about uh, what does that mean for religion when we start moving beyond the 120 year? And I I mean, we kind of skirted around the issue a little bit. And I've got one thing for you that might help as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Just understanding what it means to be a species. So we are human, at least from a scientific standpoint, until we can't reproduce with another human, Mm -hmm. per se. So. Um, even if we lived at 400 years old, as long as we can reproduce and have another theoretically 400 year old living kid, we're still when we the can human go species. forth and multiply. Homo sapiens. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so when I do we trivia. when do we say no more kids? Like, <laughs> you're old enough. <laughs> mm-hmm. Stop doing it. What? So and that, what we're are good. We after we're done having kids. Yeah. Well, well and I, that'll be a huge conversation to have. When, oh. not if, but when we start living to yep, and that's those are two hundred. Yeah. Those, those are the social structure questions yep. I have here after a bit. So we're going to pause for a minute because Britt's bringing out another beer, and then we'll get into the social quick beer aspects. and trivia. Just right before you do that, yeah, yeah. I'll uh, buy a bottle of that Wild Olivia from Brickway Brewery and Distillery. That's where can, where can we find can Brickway Brewery and, and Distillery? We need uh, a jingle. I will give somebody a bottle if they can tell me. Who, number one, who's the oldest recorded human in history? Methuselah. How old was he? 900 and... Oh. Nine, Brian's going to win. Over 900 know. years. I don't have the facts. <laughs> want, over 900? I bring the funny, Brian brings the facts. <laughs> I'm going to say over 900. No, I want an exact age. 927. 964. <laughs> Price is right. <laughs> Ooh, that's close. Brett? I don't know. 64 I can't was look to go 60. I don't care. Go 60. <laughs> Price is right. Well, uh, if we're within a certain tolerance, then what? Well, There's no tolerance. I'll say four because you're out, you're out of the range of four. Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> so it's five. Of course, then. you make the rules. I'd, I'd look it up, but my phone's Is running it this whole show. Is it nine sixty nine? Nine sixty nine. Wait, now now I'm second guessing myself. All right. Well, well see, 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 I hand wrote it so my fours oh. look like nines or nine nines look like fours. But so. you know what, props for you're pretty close, Methus. Thank you, Google, for finishing that yeah. word. <laughs> yeah, it's a little nine sixty nine. I was right. I, am, I know things. There you go. <laughs> so, do get, so do I get? So do I get half a bottle? Um, there's some left in this one. If I half a bottle of right. super juice. So yeah, th- this is Brian wanted to take a a, a a moment break. This is actually an AA. <laughs> this is not the right place for you. No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, we we started this and we're, we'll, we'll fin- finish with this. We we may have one more. We'll so see what happens. I have two uh, more in there as well. Yeah. Or is that post? This is post talk. Yeah, that'll be post talk. Um, this is the Super Juice. It's a double IPA by Cross Strain. We all love them. They are great. Uh, this is a nine point four alcohol content. Uh, this is awesome. If you haven't had it, please try it. Cross Strain is a company that I stand very behind. They are very good people and have awesome drinks. That you got to be careful how, with the praise. I mean, we do have a Brickway. No, Way that's brewery. fine. Right. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> those no, are, those are no. good dudes. Brickway I, is awesome, no, amazing. I, Everything that you've brought to the table ever since you've been on the show, you you started out at one place and now you're at another place. One place. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, no, no that Cross one. That one. That one place. What? Cross train all well all of them. Uh, those two guys came from Nebraska Brewing. Exactly, and they and that's where you came from, and that's where you have moved from. And cross train, so gets, it's all about growing. It's all about you know, well, taking the next step. Tyson Art needs props on that because 
he's a good guy. And yes. the, he's taught a lot of good guys. The name comes from the last names of the owners, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, Bobby Cross and Scott Strain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is kind of cool. That's, it, it Would not have well. guessed that from a like an outsider here. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's that's it's, why I bring these things up. I I, I have good call. people that come from out of town, and I'm like, hey, have you had a? Yeah. And I go, and they're like. Oh. Yeah, very very <laughs> solid stuff. They they tackle uh, unpopular styles, and I mean that in a nice way. They because everybody wants IPAs, and right yeah. now all the rage is the a majority lager. of their yep. stuff is IPAs, yep. though. You know, well they yeah the majority, but they tackle styles and they do them well. Uh, Cross train is very good, and yeah. they're they're. They're only just over a year old, oh, right. and they're already on the national scene. Pass yep. Blue Ribbon's so insane. great, though, too, you know? So, like, you know, we can't just not, you know, put this in one... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Six years of a PBR in the fridge, you know, at the right angle. <laughs> <laughs> 50 how, degrees. Oh, yeah. How far under the freezer? 65 degrees. I yeah. lived in Montana, and I could get a 24-pack <laughs> of PBR for 18 bucks. And the only thing I could think of... 18 bucks? Well, the only thing I could think of is the guy had a... a a ski lift pass like to get the beer to where we needed to get to it was an hour to get to the nearest oh, like walmart okay so like i was gonna say gonna I'm like, there's only what way he'd charge. get there he'd deliver the beer and he's like i'm going skiing Jeez. you know or I something say, i used to get a dirty 30 of high life for 8.99 <laughs> dirty <laughs> pbrs <laughs> run in yeah. china oh, it was 24 more. pack of pbr for 18 Shh, bucks you got ripped off for eighteen bucks, twenty-four ounce PBR are we, are in China PBR is like ten or bucks. Super juice from Cross Train. <laughs> We're talking PBR, a twenty-four pack. You act like PBR is good. It was in the mountains. It was an hour outside of a oh, Walmart. So, like, the mountains like, are blue so on the can. I was gonna say, do the cans turn blue yeah. when they're ready to drink? Well, I yeah. don't know. That's when the orcs it come. Can't be that bad. <laughs> the orcs, the woolly mammoths <laughs> come down. It's like the sword from Lord of the Rings. Thank you. Starts for, glowing. Thank you for getting the time. <laughs> you know it's good. Yeah. All right. Uh, I will say that, um, nice. I, had that was a, fun. <laughs> I had a I had a friend of mine that I was drinking with at uh, Old Chicago, and he's he's a bit he's got the pewter mug and everything. I mean, he's been through the cycle at least ten times. Um, but anyway, uh, they had PBR on tap and I was kind of making fun of it. I'm like, Oh really? PBR on tap. And I mean, this is old Chicago. He's like, have you had it? I'm yeah. like, you know, you're right. I have not had it. I'm not going to knock it until I have it. And so I ordered a pint of PBR and I was honestly surprised at a light beer. It yeah. actually had flavor. It is, but it's just, I guess when you, when you're in the brewing industry, it's more of, you know, where's your money going? Right. And I would rather spend it locally, honestly. Usually at, when I make that statement, everybody rolls their eyes. At Brickway before. Brewery and Distillery. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> or Crow Chain. Yeah, right yeah. now, like, oh, yesterday. So I worked on a Saturday, and I'm like, no, we get this done because we're going to, we're, we're moving to a different house. We're going to take Monday off. So right now, you got to try. We, yeah, I hear that you guys got a new place coming. Is that? Maybe, yes. It's, ma it's Not maybe, it is. It is. It's just a matter of timing. Okay. And it's, right. it's Can like, we, we say where it's at? Oh, I don't know. Okay. I just, but it's going to happen. Like, it's very close. Was well, a tap room? It's in the cloud. It'll be. I know. <laughs> like it's, it's in the cloud. The cloud <laughs> at this point. Right now. Um, uh, it'll be a production facility. Cool. So that'll be off site uh, somewhere in town. And that's all of our core series, like the, the main. And we're talking, shows. ladies and gentlemen, Brickway, you know. Brickway. Yeah. And then the downtown. Let's get back on topic here. Will be the distillery and we'll do a sour house. Cool. Remember yeah, I was talking earlier, we got to yep. separate sour sours. Ah. Yeah, because so if you mess up, you get a, a grenade whole bomb. It. building yeah. for sour, huh? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. then, wow. literally, down if, if you just do distillery and sour house, you don't have to sanitize anything. Anything goes. So that's the biggest thing in brewing. It's like 95% cleaning and sanitation. When you have a distillery and the sour house, yeah, Amen. alcohol content so high you don't yeah, have to worry about it. it. You, matter, your job's right? just like mine. Uh, <laughs> you you were saying no, no. You were saying earlier it's, that it was like I want to brew beer. Well, get ready for the cleaning. Yeah. Well, I am an AV specialist. I just want to hook up things and you know run the yeah. projectors and all that sort of jazz. No, I tape down so many things. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on my knees taping down things yeah. left and right. Look at this tape table. Yeah, this is <laughs> this tape is job here is oh, on. It's very nice. It's cleaning it's and clean. everything has to be yeah. just perfect. Like you can't miss something because then now it opens up potential. You never know. And, and the thing is, it, it's like a silent killer. If you don't clean properly and you infect it somehow, it's not going to show up for a good three months or so, man, yeah. ish. And then now you get a whole other mess of things. Just because recalls. you forgot to scrub a little harder. Something, anything. Because mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. thing is, from the, the grain to glass aspect, there's so many different vessels and different things that touches all along the way. 
And if you if you miss a part, it could just ruin the whole thing. But it won't happen right away. So if you like brewing, um, get ready for cleaning. You have to be yeah. a professional janitor. You have yeah. to love. The, you have to be <laughs> OCD, janitor. animal retentive. You have to. Or know do you guys hire janitors? Like, yeah, me. What do you think I do? Well, you know, <laughs> no, no, you, you know what I'm saying is like, you're a good janitor, but I uh, bet yeah. you'd be a better brewer. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I. You know what? That's a good idea. All right, go to the go to the OPS schools or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. Right? Hit that point. This dude's got skills. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to clean everything. That's Can you know how to put that chalk dust though. down? I yeah. think you're on to something. I like that. <laughs> I'm just trying. <laughs> like he knows what the best thing to put down for whatever the cleaning thing cleaning. is. Cleaning, clean, 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 man. All right, have you had your fun? Can I bring this train back on the track? Yep. Oh, and we geez. always bring enjoy that. Brian, uh, the rally killer. I'm back. I know. Bring us back down. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll Brian, leave. pass it off. All right. So ew. we are now going to move into the social aspects of uh, using CRISPR um, because uh, with it comes a lot of genetic modification. We can start living longer. So let's start with something that we talked that we touched a little bit on. Uh, on the last talk was the CAS system or the class structure system that will really come about because CAS9, is that what we're talking about? The CRISPR-Cas9 system. Okay. Um, let's say it comes out. We're going to use it on humans, on embryos. Ready, set, go. We're, we're going to have designer babies. Um, <laughs> That's so, so funny. <laughs> I'm never going to not laugh yeah. at that. <laughs> This one's wearing Vogue. <laughs> Until 10 years when everyone's yeah. like, what are we doing right, so, right okay. now? Even if we said we, we had a system in place that said, you know, um, you know, we don't want this only for the rich. It's going to happen anyway. Right. So the, the, the super rich people, they're going to have something that says, oh, OK, yes, you you lower humans, you 99 percent are going to have this CRISPR technology and you can get here. But us one percent are going to have that's going to happen. It's it an ineb- it's inevitably. Absolutely. So it's going to create an, a separate class structure, which we still have today. I say we have you know, that on different levels. The one percent rich the, children are Elon Musk's babies are going to yeah. be amazing. Wealthy children are typically ten to fifteen percent healthier than Thank normal you. children. Yeah. Yes, and that was also on the better food. Yes, I know that what doesn't I can, bother me. Yeah, yeah. No. that that we're healthier. Uh, the are you rich? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I? <laughs> I'll also <laughs> take some of that money, Brian. Yeah, really? Did I miss that part? Well, oh, geez, please, in, please pass I've got a special beer for you. Well, actually, <laughs> tech, it depends on if you're talking, are you talking America or are you talking globally? Because globally, you're rich. Is Brian your real name? Uh, no, <laughs> it is not. I go by uh, many different names. It's Methusel- actually Ryan, but <laughs> Methuselah is my other name. Methuselah. Methuselah. How old was he? Enoch is my oh. 969. Yeah. You know, if you're going to move that mic, just let me know. I got a mute button over here. You got to mute it? <laughs> yes. Mute it. I got it. Our world. Best to meet it now. What's going on, man? Yeah. I thought we were hitting turbulence <laughs> down here. There's turbulence on my side. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. When You're losing I, some food. When I did that, everybody says one word. Ready? Rookie. Moist. Oh, rookie, oh, moist. oh rookie move. Moist. Rookie mistake. Yeah. Your, your yeah. microphone's not working right yeah. now, so yeah. that didn't come yeah. across. I'll say it moist. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> moist. Yeah, we need, we, need a, uh, we need a jar for the rookie move, the rookie move jar. Ooh. Yeah, that'd be kind of fun. Ding. Yeah. Everybody no, gets, no. Things no, that just, fold. It's slowly it's dying <laughs> off the edge of the table. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Here, I'll there come, out. I'll All come right. out. All right. Brian, take it over. All right. So we're going to talk about the class structure that's going to happen uh, with uh, with CRISPR class nine, uh, CRISPR Cas nine. So when we eventually start designing kids and babies, is that better? Is that that wasn't even easier? I was, no, it's, it's I, was trying funny. To, I was trying to make it softer. All right. So when we start uh, genetically enhancing embryos, is that better? It's still funny. So, all it's right. designer babies. All right. So, so, yeah, that was the big thing on what I watched and read was that there's already inequality. And now we're really, yeah. we're really drawing the line. Now we're really calling people out. Well, and that, that really gets into Gattaca, the movie Gattaca. Yep. And if you haven't seen it, you should, you should, it's an older movie, but it's really, really good. And it shows the class system. And like, even like dating is, is completely different. Like, there are, uh, there are snippets in there that are, they're kind of like throwaway scenes, but if you like really, think about them that they're brilliant and um like let's say you go out on a date and it's your first kiss and so you would immediately go to like this uh this atm machine and you would take that dna from the kiss and put it in there and you could see oh this person is predisposed disposed to these things and oh they're good sounds like a lot of work (laughs) 
Wow. But but <laughs> yeah, but sure but at that is. point in society, have you I mean, not seen that movie? We've already mapped the human oh, gene. Wow. This is I'm way in the future. Check this out. Yeah. It is just to plug it. It is one of the most highly recommended movies per accuracy mm-hmm. from scientists really? of any movie. I've never even heard of it. Mm-hmm. Which I didn't either until I think high school they made us watch it once and I was like, oh, okay, it's yeah. a movie I watched. It's got, uh, and then suddenly I was like, oh, Gattaca. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, shoot. Ethan Hawke is the main character. Um, Jude Law is like the side character for him. And okay. then Uma Thurman is also yeah, a main character. A lot of character. great characters in there. Yeah, that's, yeah, those are a lot of big names. I've never heard of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it, it kind of flew under the radar as kind far of, as like... Of, it starts off kind of boring, but you're yep. like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Like you could, if you watch it from a like a this could really happen because this could really happen. It sounds like it is. Um, it it's is an amazing kind movie. Of happening. Yep. Yeah, happening. Yep. So we we talked but a little happening. bit about that. We got into the class structure a little bit. Um, it's gonna happen. We're gonna we're gonna have the divide. We already have a divide wealth wise. Did we right. just have a question go across your screen? I had something come down, pop up. No, not All yet. Right, fair enough. Maybe I was just looking at something. Nope. Um. So um. That's going to happen. There's not really much we can do about it. It's going to happen. So, But there was something interesting. I did watch a, a video on TED Talks, which I love. And um, You're welcome. <laughs> thank you, Ted. Um, <laughs> Nick Ted. Uh, but this was, it was actually um, in uh, Italy, I believe. And uh, he was really explaining what would happen. Um, and I'm going to actually coin a term here. Uh, we're gonna call them crispies, all right? Oh, <laughs> people who have crispered. Yep, people who have. Can we call them crispies? I like it. I like it. They've all been right. in the oven too all right. long. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. They're it's crispy. Horrible. It's crispy. So, <laughs> they got too crisper. Yep. Drink talk after dark. Exactly. So let's say um, you, um, as a, uh, we're at a point in society where we're using crisper as a regular thing, but it's still not mandatory. It's an optional thing, and you and your husband or wife or significant other decide as a conscious choice that you do not want to use CRISPR to enhance sure. them. You want to use that as a therapy, but not as an enhancement. Mm-hmm. And you want to have more of a natural child. So your natural child is born and they're perfectly fine. Ten fingers, ten toes, not any diseases. Perfectly fine. Your neighbors decide Otherwise, they say, no, we want a crispy baby. We want to have the, design, <laughs> the designer baby. We want them to have higher intelligence. So at five years old, you are conversing with this child, and you quickly realize that this child is almost as intelligent, if not more intelligent, than you are. So now we have to set up separate schools for crispy children. Sure. And But the price point sounds... Yeah, that's got to be like an insane price point. But this is this is a conscious. This is not so. You can do it. It's not a, money is not a factor at this point. We're at a point in society where it is a it. We're but, using it regular, but you can still consciously choose to use it or not. You go and shop for a genius baby. You got to be paying millions right now. Right now you are, and it's actually like a LCD TV. Yeah, like ten yep. years ago, and actually Mike. Right, um, but now now you can get that same exact TV yeah. for. Right, like two hundred dollars on the day after yeah. Thanksgiving. Hundred bucks. Well, well, Craigslist has baby. them too. Um, oh, so <laughs> Craigslist babies. The back alley. <laughs> yeah, Mike actually Craigslist designer babies. Mike actually works at a. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say where he works, but he's actually talked about that. And there is gene editing that we are doing right now, as far as uh, and this is happening today. And you can pay fifty thousand dollars, and you can get a what we would consider a designer baby today. You want a male. We can do that. What? You, do you want them? You to, can pick the the sex for. We've been able thousand. to pick the sex for the last ten, I think, years. Okay, I've been. I, which I didn't know either until I heard it, and I was like, yeah. "Oh, are yeah. you serious? Okay. Yes, Apparently I am. We can I am, price. I am for price. You can pick for fifty thousand dollars gender, and that's today. And it's and it's not even a like a. My first thought was, "What in the world are they doing?" But then you're like, "These are the same people that are like, I can't have a kid." Can I have a kid now with this intravenous oh, this technology? IVF technology. Gotcha. And they're like, oh, by the way, also, do you want to pick the gender? And they're like, okay, by the way, yeah. Oh, do you want to do have this. blue eyes or brown eyes? Oh, well. But I- uh, it, it, it's not. 
It's not guaranteed. It's not a slippery. Yeah, but is, it's is not a slippery a risk, slope. Is there a yeah. risk you mess this up and you? you so know. you mess the gender up and it's it's a girl instead of a boy. I'm not talking about messing the gender up. I'm that's what I'm mess, saying. But that's that's where we're at for mistakes right now. Is mm-hmm. if you if you mess it up, you just get the opposite sex. Are you sure? You're not messing up an entire human. You're not messing the whole thing where it's not. You're not yet. splicing DNA. You are selectively choosing embryos that have a higher probability of being male, right, or female, depending on what you want. So, but that's exactly what you should be thinking is. I'm trying to get is, on topic Can here. you mess this wow. up this is, in yeah. a bigger way than just... So, Britt Br- Br- just stepped out for yeah. a second. So, Sorry. just to I bring up... Speech, uh, today, we have the technology to actually choose the sex of your baby. It, it is expensive. It's like 50 oh, grand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and Mike's you talked about it. Yeah, yeah. No, I know that. Yeah. So, that's where I we're at. I heard about it. Yeah. But it's that's not hard. No, it's not. But is that is that CRISPR or is that no, just... We already no, know how no, to... Nope. We're not using CRISPR on embryos. Wait, gotcha. how is that not CRISPR? You get the so CRISPR is just the specific technique. Let, think of it like um, you have bad bones. You want to take that out. And you uh, want to have good bones. You're not a girl, and now you're a boy. How is that not CRISPR? <laughs> because so, you're not splicing the DNA. You basically, you're seeing the embryos and saying, "Oh, this one has a higher probability of being a boy, and this one has well, a higher probability." Didn't of being I a see girl. somewhere that okay. that women embryos have four hundred thousand or forty thousand more genetic chromosomes than men do? Or I something would, like I that. Chromosomes, that. N- not chromosomes, because genes. It's, genes, genes. <laughs> I don't, you, you know what I'm Women saying? Women are born with all of the. Uh, they, they they have more than men because they have to recreate life. Right. You know they're born with all the eggs they're ever going to have, and that's a, it's a finite amount. Whereas men just kind of just we do what we do and mm-hmm. we just produce sperm yeah. and forever. There's okay. No limit. Mm-hmm. So I, there, I think there is a difference between men and for women sure. that they can From see a clearly. Sexual Reproduction standpoint. Okay. Yep. Yes. Good. So CRISPR is actually going in and splicing the DNA and saying, no, we don't, we see that this one has a genetic di- uh, disposition to X. Uh, we don't want that. So let's slice that out and we're going to replace it with DNA. That's ridiculous. That is CRISPR. That's just crazy that they could see that and go, hmm. No thanks. So, so think of it in the aspect at crazy. the beginning we talked about it's it. Crazy. So, yep. what CRISPR does? Yeah, CRISPR is the hey, we have this virus, right? And it's got a mug shot. And the Cas9 is the snip. Is that right? Is that am I right? so the yep. Cas the Cas9 yep. um, surgery? Yeah, snips it at the at the genetic. So you've got your 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 the DNA, the ACTG. The okay. it can slip snip a letter out, one letter out of your DNA, and Using the CRISPR system, which says, hey, look for this, and now we can program, look for this, and then we use the Cas9 system to say, cut that out, and then we just reprogram. So why not? Like, why, is that, why would that be a bad thing? It's weird, because we've so been doing it. That's the ethics that we're talking about right now. And it's a weird ethics argument, because we've been doing it for so long, especially with things like mental illnesses, which is, uh, yeah, this like, person has like, a, this person can't handle addiction, Let's lobotomize them. That's what mm-hmm. we used to do. It was right. it's like a broad. So well, somehow, and even, full t- even thing. today, and I talked about this last talk, yeah. even today, like Iceland is eradicating uh, Down syndrome. But, yeah. But it's through. That's, that was <laughs> Swedish. So No, that wasn't Swedish. It's Iceland. That was, that was Scandinavian. It yeah. was Scandinavian. It's up north. So <laughs> Iceland is eradicating Down syndrome, but it's through abortion methods. So they're doing pre screening on that, and they are aborting babies that have a disposition towards Down syndrome, and they have almost completely, like, it is almost 100% eradicated Down syndrome. And that's not a clickbait like, title. That is well, legitimately that is, a thing they've done. So right. that's a whole other aspect. Which so, is. Which is Maybe potentially we could eliminate Eugenics. abortion. We could. We can see, you know, but, anybody who's thinking about it, we can go, hey, you know what? Let's take a look and see what your kid's going to have. Oh, you know, this and somehow it's going to... We can fix that. We can fix that. Yep. Can we do a pause break here? Pre-treating disease. Yes. Yep. Exactly. That's exactly what we're talking about. What re- I mean, come on. I mean, what religion would be like, no, if they're, if they're predisposed to X disease, nope. The way God made them. Come on, how, how cold hearted are you? Yeah, and that's where we, I got. We, just because you're not either we make a pill or you know you yeah. you inge- you know take something, you know. Yeah, they, they, we'd fix that. Okay, in that case, that's just dumb. I mean, well, people are just like. But there's a big uh, chunk. Brian, of, I'm thinking we that. do one more, sure. and then. Oh, hey, I know a lot about that. One. Oh, you, <laughs> know, you want to talk about this one? <laughs> please talk about well, it. Please talk about this. This commercial break brought to you by. Exactly. We're at the top of the hour, so might as well. Keep the more you keep hop. Hip hop anonymous. Hip hop anomaly. Hip hop. Uh, In fact, I've got one more cup here. I'm gonna <laughs> just gonna totally fresh my so cup here. So hop anomaly is now. That's no longer. That's it's actually 
the anomaly has been crisp out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no longer. That was my tie-in. Was yeah. <laughs> oh. Well done. Well it's done. No longer called a hop anomaly. So the thing, I, I, they were, well, I a, thought it was no longer Hop God. Now it's called Hop Anomaly. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Hop God, I believe, is some wine over in California or something dumb. Because when you're drinking the wine, you could be confused with the beer. <laughs> you could. I it's mean, in a similar bottle. A sim- very similar <laughs> bottle. Well, you know what? Let's go a step further. Brickway. So Brickway used to be called Borgata. And Borgata is a casino out in Atlantic City, which is easily confusable. When you walk into a casino in Borgata, you're like, Oh, I thought this was a brewery in Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> but, Who would have known? Who would have known? Right. Brigada. And this is actually part actually, of the tour. I like that name a lot better than Brickway. Brigada. Brigada. I believe, they're stuck is, with that. It's, it's Italian for family. Let yeah, no. The Brigada. And so it's part and of the Bugatti. tour. And Bugatti. The Bugatti. The Bugatti. It's Bugatti. Yeah. <laughs> so Borgata actually contacted us and said, hey, you know what? If you want to fight this, you're going to win. But guess what? We have more money than you, and we're going to drag this out until you don't have any more money. We got a guy named Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> they got an offer that you can't refuse. He's, <laughs> He's a made There's man. There's a horse. Yeah. There's an me actual me. horse involved in this situation. <laughs> or a horse head in so, the bed. Do you want a horse head? This is how you get no, a horse head. This is how you get a horse head in the bed. Don't yep. mess with Italian family. And if you don't know that reference... <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on Next you. Next episode, Godfather. It's not about the three. <laughs> I will you do you this one. come to me this day. Yes. Yes. I will do you this wedding. one. I will do you this one, baby. Memory wedding. So, uh, Nebraska Brewing. Uh, this is Hop Anomaly, but it's now called the Hop God again. It's a Chardonnay barrel-aged. Belgian Golden Strong. Mm. It's like riding a horse. <laughs> <laughs> if you're Marlon Brando. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Pe- people yeah. are asking to turn up the gain on Mitchell's mic again. I bottled, yeah. I bottled this one. Did that that specific one? Mm-hmm. How do you know? Where's your it signature? Has a, on it? it has a date on it. Oh, okay. And oh, it's, that's why I bought it because I knew it had your signature on there. Oh, good thing there's no electronics right there. <laughs> there's, none. there's none. Mine was water. Yours is a foul. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, right. these are they're just cords. Yep. <laughs> Cords We're all just cords, cords and stuff <laughs> connected to the string theory, the interwebs the and stuff. Yep. Really loud. Uh, is that me? Just yeah. Well, I turned you up because people were saying turn your, turn you, his ears down. I can turn your ears down. Yeah, yeah. Don't plug it in all the way. <laughs> this one goes to eleven. <laughs> <laughs> they can't hear me, so they haven't heard me this whole time. Apparently, you're no, not they talking haven't heard you the whole time. But yeah. you know, we get suggestions. Yep. A little more. Your ears are very young. Dude, that was loud. Young. I'm older than you, son. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you're you're, oh, you're older than 36? Yes. All right. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> older than you, son. In dog maybe years? Not, maybe not. Dude, I'm older than you. All right. Say right. Bro. 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 All, All right, bro. That's going to sit there for a minute because i got to finish mine because I'm... Yeah. So I've been so into the conversation. Trouble, Brian. Lots of trouble. I've been fruits. deep in the conversation. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, mm, what do candy. you think? Lots of lots of cotton candy, lots of like this Belgian candy sugar. Oh yeah, Van- oh, I, vanilla. I, why am I smelling a little bit of sour in there? You're not. Uh, that's that's easily confused. A lot of people said that. Yep. No, I smell this. I smell sour. It's not. It's the um, it's the I Chardonnay it barrels. Yeah, I'm gonna need the just the last little bit of the that. Chardonnay barrels. That's what it is. A the Chardonnay of, that I'm smelling. A lot of people always said that it was sour, and I'm like, yep. nope. It smells I, like sour, though. Yeah, I said I was talking to Paul about that at Nebraska, the Nebraska Brewing Company. I said, you know, I, I don't want to say it's a sour because it didn't taste like a sour, but the nose on it, that Chardonnay nose. Yep, it's the it's barrel. It. Yep, easily confused. All right, so moving past the class structure and the schools, um, if we are using CRISPR to enhance at this point in society, enhance, enhance. Um, what what does that mean for the medical side of society? And this is d- does CRISPR become like the the go to like so does CRISPR become the new antibiotic? Does I mean oh instead of taking the pill and, instead of getting the shot you're now just just take CRISPR and you're fine right we it, program CRISPR and say it take will this be pill. the second it is able to be that right so. That. How does Here. the price lower if everybody uses it? Kind of like if everybody so, buys a flat screen TV, does the right, price go down? So right now, I will tell you right now, you can buy CRISPR for $75 and have it in your home. The problem is you don't know how to program it, and you don't have a lab in your home to actually genetically And it's modify. important to remember that CRISPR is 
the scissors. It's the actual right. Like, the CRISPR Cas9 CRISPR Cas9 right. Right. So you also need to have gene editing uh, a program in there in place. So can you order it at, at your home on Amazon? I don't know if it's on Amazon, but it can, is on Amazon. Well, the the home brewing kit is, but I don't know. Why if, would they sell it if nobody knows how to use it? That's just, right. It you, comes with instructions because people like, cause like people are buying it. Place A and to B. <laughs> you, 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 one eyeball, really one knows. eyeball closed, and the other eyeball closed, and then the other yes. eyeball opened, and then yeah. the other eyeball closed. It was we're very, surprised it, it was about a the very place A and to B, but that's exactly what CRISPR is, <laughs> it is, which is weird. You could literally look up. I mean, within our generation, within the next twenty years, probably, um, we can look up. Uh, gene associated with Alzheimer's, and hopefully we get one gene. I remember when people were getting yeah, Alzheimer's. Back in my day, <laughs> no, when know. people had Alzheimer's and no one remembered. Yeah. Okay. Let's pick. Let's just pick and then that. Pick suddenly, that apart. There's and suddenly, good about that. No, right. And suddenly, there's this like chunk of uh, words in your DNA, chunk of letters, A T C G C G. Yeah. And we have that exact code that says this is Alzheimer's. And then you at home could Google it and say, what's the code for Alzheimer's? And it says A, T, C, 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 A, G, 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 whatever, whatever. And then you're like, all right, delete. And then you delete it. Delete it. And then Facebook deleted. Why did I and think this done. is an episode of Grease? A, 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 G, 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 C, 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 Well, there's, we've already gotten rid of uh, muscul- muscular what's dystrophy in mice. In the radio? One gene. Sickle cell was on the docket. For America, we FDA decided to cancel their. Okay, so bring in the religious. Act. I want to know who's not okay with not with getting the, rid of that. So, the answer will not surprise you. The European Union has okayed the sickle cell cure via CRISPR. Ooh, sickle cell. That's yep. the cell that when I was in the military, that was a big one. Like the they, plan yeah. was, mm-hmm. and the plan was for America to do the same at the exact same time and just really study the the biological disequilibrium that could happen Mm -hmm. in that moment uh fda canceled out and european union said now we're gonna we're gonna keep going we're gonna try we'll see what happens no Um, i'm not gonna do that we're gonna not 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 cure our people so uh but that's the problem with this technology is the cure is again kind of what we've been hinting at all along which is there's a lot of money to be made in people who are sick so if I can cure diabetes, Answer. all of a sudden, all of these people that create insulin for $100 a, a pop, they've lost their business. But so, here's here's the problem. And is I can fix it forever. Lines. Big farm. Forever. Big farm. But that's, Aliens. so yeah, that's, so Brits makes a valid point. Yep. The the reason we don't have cures right now for these diseases is because drug companies Big are farm. stepping in. Lots and of money say, the lobbyists. Exactly. Yep. Tons of money. Wait a minute. We can cure it for... 500 bucks or we can spend a lifetime yeah. just holding yeah. on to the can symptoms I, and i keep my job so. can i blow your mind yeah. no it's not Government. just get up to the table raise your hand if you've ever on. had on, you might as well at this yeah. point just on, join it's, the combo put your eyes on the chair it's, join the combo yeah. it's not government there's a whole it's ton drug of company right there yeah you're gonna love to sitting eat. here yeah raise <laughs> your hand if you have ever had a cavity before that, was that drive-by Ooh, journalism? Or I have you ever had a cavity? <laughs> nope. Just <laughs> me. I am the only one who's had a cavity. That's fair. Yeah. You guys have uh, cavities? I've never had a cavity. Me a either. cavity. A cavity. I'm not saying like a root canal. I'm just saying any sort of Pull cavity. Pull the mic. Be ready. <laughs> Insane. My wife has never oh, had a cavity. I want to hear. Yeah. Okay. Cavities are 1,000. That's a real. That's a fake number. People get 100%. real real when they drink. Yeah. That's what I like about I'm the so show. so real. Uh, <laughs> cavities are 100% curable. We have vaccines mm-hmm. that cure cavities. We would never, as a species, have cavities again. That's not what God wants. But I've ne- have, you but, had, have you had cavities? But guess who loses yeah. a All right, boatload year old, uh, of money oh, John the by Bap- curing John cavities? The, Baptist the cavities. ADA loses their entire business model because of that. But still, people will brush their teeth because, like, for me, Certainly. I do. I do it as like it freshens my breath. But, or, keeps, or, uh, or you could have a, or you could, as a child, have a vaccine. I've for never had a cavity strain of bacteria, I, you know and I still and brush then, my teeth. You're done. I'm on this side That's of the it. table. I don't know. <laughs> so let's say you if you have you had cavities? Yes. So if you stopped having cavities, would you stop brushing your teeth? Yes. See, I have never had a cavity and I still brush my teeth twice a day. Because you've never not had a cavity. 
Right, but it's not why I brush my teeth. But why do you brush your teeth? Because I don't like things and stuff in my teeth. Yeah, I don't like sure. waking up in the morning. And but going, you, could, you could literally yeah, wake yeah, up and yeah. just like slurp a bunch of water and. I, I have got, so I can like feel on my teeth. Like oh, I yeah. can I can feel that. Like if that, I haven't brushed my teeth in a day, that, like, I can so feel that, that bacteria so goes away. Yeah. Who, who throws billions? Is that ADA or FDA? Who throws billions in both to say hey? Nope. For cavities, we, we it's ADA. We can't cure cavities. Here she comes. But FDA <laughs> yeah. said no to sickle on. cell as the cure. So America was about to uh, co... Yeah. You're fine. Is it loud? I can turn it down. Oh, I just got called a baby for my... Boom. <laughs> you can turn it down. America almost sent a cure out for yeah. sickle cell anemia. Europe did it, and we were going to do it at the same time. And FDA at the last minute said, nope, we're not going to do human Our testing. FDA. Our FDA. Mm-hmm. Europe is still going with it, though, because why wouldn't Europe? Well, So now Europe doesn't do... Um, so, like, we put... Uh, uh, fluoride in the water, right? And we're literally the only we're country, one of the only people that, do, that which is in the weird entire because they say don't swallow your, uh, your toothpaste. water toothpaste. Yeah, yeah. It, it's fluoride. Don't swallow it, and it's like we put it in our water. Mm-hmm. Can I ask a question that just no, you, you cannot everything <laughs> that we've talked about well, all night? Are you about to ru- like? I'm about to just whole show? destroy. I'm going to zoom show right into his question. face here. Right, Hold, on. Ready? Hold on, you got to look at the camera and do this to the face. In the face. Destroy it. Okay. <laughs> so we can have this conversation all night long about where we draw our ethics. And we can have a, like a, we could develop this unanimous decision where we all agree, like, this is where we draw the line. And then tomorrow, let's say we draw the line tonight. And we are the governing bodies of America. And we say, that hey, a terrible, cool that be? terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> how, how smart America would be. We are four be beers, five beers we, deep. If they trusted probably not us a good idea. with some casual pints and we were good to go, <laughs> I'll take my $5 oh. from the casual pint Exactly, pot. as I turn it towards the uh, <laughs> camera. But you're not, the only but, one on camera right, right now. So that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Uh, so let's say tonight we decide this is our ethical like situation. This is what we're going to go with. We're good with this. America is going to follow suit. Mm-hmm. We're not going to test genetically. We're not going to introduce these gene drives that produce long-term sustainability for a genetic change in humans that make everyone smarter. And then tomorrow, China says, by the way, our entire population as of today is now going to be intelligent, hyper-intelligent. We We've made it to the it. moon first. We yeah. already did it. We it's made it literally, to the moon first. we are on the cusp of a space race. Where this choice isn't really a choice. Mm-hmm. We Not don't get to choose race, human race. We don't get to choose when it's convenient for us because we're about to be at this point where we can spend all day long talking about whether it's ethical. But the second someone else does it, you have a choice to make, which is do you do it or do you become that that poor species that isn't right. intelligent enough? Exactly. And that's that's and that's I am glad you brought up the space race because that is actually something that if we start living beyond 120 150 200 300 900 years whatever um that is something that is that has huge implications on uh going into space into long-term space exploration and there's some sign language going on here but we're going to get into it's cameras on brian so they don't see what's going on here all right so they're going so i'm going to go with uh uh i'm going to go with geriatric care uh because you brought that up uh sabrina thank you for bringing that up yeah, uh, just you can get close to it. Just don't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's all right. It's cameras on. Brian. I'm literally punching it right now. Yeah. As we, we have talked about the medical side of CRISPR and using that as antibiotics and swallowing a pill that is pre-programmed to cure whatever ails you. And let's move into the geriatric care. Let's, let's before assume, we move. Oh, there was a question that was just asked moments ago, and oh, Brian yeah. can pull it up quicker than I can. Yep. So. Um, so Logan says, I've had cavities when I was younger. I went to the dentist and they said that they needed to drill out the old cavities and put in new cavities, in quotes. <laughs> oh. oh, no. I d- since I've never had a, had a cavity, Logan. I'm 13. I, no, I get it. But that's, but that's what you do is you, you – so this bacteria carries is what it's called. Oh, the other one? You infects your up? tooth. Kind of like you, a, is it kind of like a flu strain? So they're they're injecting something new so you don't get that cavity again. Is no, that, this is, that... is so. <laughs> dentists are so far oh, behind I see what, what where everyone else is. Brett, quit doing the cross conversation. It's so hard. Sorry. <laughs> uh, what we're going to just take a pause real quick, okay. and you guys can get right back to what you were talking Let's about. We're going to stay. It. We're going to stay with cross strain, uh, and we're going to open up the. Ho- yeah, we're going to open up their hop streaker. 
This is their actually low alcohol content uh, beer. This is their 4.9 beer. Uh, this is their hop trigger. And it's actually got quite a funny label. It, it's like a hop that's running across the field, and he's got a little uh, <laughs> right where his private parts are. <laughs> a little no no. <laughs> a little uh, blurred vision. A little, there? Not blurred, just a black block. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so. That's hard. We're, we're, we're open this up, and uh, you guys just continue talking. That's, okay, I'm just saying. All right. So, 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 is injecting a new cavity? Uh, I, and I'm this, I'm guessing this is what Logan's asking. Sure. Yeah. Is it like the flu vaccine? So the that concept of injecting a new cavity is similar to a flu vaccine. It's not what we do currently, though. We literally just drill out the area of it's our tooth of that has. I'm still drinking. Any sort of infected yeah just do that one part of our tooth um and we remove it that's mm-hmm. kind of like a very old school stone age way to solve that problem uh carries vaccine would introduce this carries the the cavity bacteria to our body and then we basically say hey look there's this dead bacteria that will infect our teeth Please take a snapshot of it, kind of like CRISPR does. And remove it. And uh, never let it yeah. like associate itself with us again. So they're, so they're filling the old cavity with... You know when you get a mosquito bite and it itches? CRISPR is the thing that comes in as like, hey, that doesn't itch anymore. Or never Just like a cavity, free. it's there and you're like, no, nope, it's not there anymore. It, it, it just can't infest itself anymore. You're... Very You're close successful. on the exact okay. like, uh, I'm a, I'm, science behind yeah. it. So <laughs> got a few beers. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That was a pretty good. Explanation. Basically, you are now a scientist. <laughs> so, so you uh, yeah, you right. won. So you won the deal. Yeah. Logan, I hope we. I, I don't know if we answered your question, but I, I think that's what you were getting at. Is why do they inject new in quotes new cavity? And they don't currently do that. Okay. They don't currently inject new cavities. What they do is they just basically like hardwire drill all the old infected tooth out and that's their hope is that it'll it's a very rough way to deal it, with things. it kind of seems like dentists are back in the lobotomy ages like if we just take a chunk of the brain right. out then uh but it'll be and good you, and you sit there and you wonder why and i don't there. mean any disrespect to dennis i no. do not mean any disrespect Hard, to, yeah tough job yeah and the suicide rate is so insane. high it's insane what but for we get in this it oh, is yeah. like the number one job for suicide rates yep I thought the number one job for suicide rates was um, like an, uh, airplane uh, people. The, uh, uh, yeah, air those, traffic controllers. Air, air traffic, tin, tin I thought cup. those were. Look up, the, look up suicide rates for dentists. They're, they're insanely Why? high. I have, Why? Be, who wants to go who to a has dentist? Ever, you always they're are hoping so for depressed. the air traffic controller to hope that they do their job well. <laughs> yeah. You're just but like, you please nev- go you, away, dentist. Yeah. But you never, never show up again. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't care if you do your job right. Just yeah. don't ever exist. Right. Okay. So, so air traffic controllers have a high stress job, but they never deal with the generic public. Dentists have people that come to them every single day that do not want to come to see them. That probably does mm, something okay. to your psyche. Mm. I've never heard that. I've never heard Look that up either. suicide rates on Dennis. It's it insane. It must not be true. That's been since I was in uh, <laughs> grade internet. school. That was a <laughs> conversation we had like in grade school. I just like to say that I loved going to the dentist. I never hated it. I school. never hated Have going you ever had a cavity, though? All right. So, yes. well, here's the dentist part of me. Uh, I had uh, I had braces, and they were like, your teeth are like this, and they need to be like that. And then I had braces for six months, and I'm like, yeah, they pulled one over on my parents. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I'm like, six, Everyone needs so braces. So yeah. six months of braces corrected me for the rest of my entire life. Cool, thanks. But, but you switched over from a dentist to an orthodontist at that Only point. Only if you wear your retainer every night. Oh, yeah, because yeah, that happens. Right. There's and, that. <laughs> we're going to bring this train back on the right. tracks yeah, at this yeah. point. Okay, exactly. so I we, think there's an easy like path you make, though. To bring this Logan, nice, nice question though. Track. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, Logan, thank you for that. And I think that uh, the CRISPR technology would uh, make it a little easier to not inject new uh, cavities into your teeth uh, and just like solve the problem of not getting cavities at all. Um, I'd like that actually. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get into like geriatric care. Let's say in society we've already started moving to the point where we're living beyond the years that we have, and can we? We can all agree that. In the last 100 years, we've already evolved as a species, as a human species, to the point where we're living well beyond what we were 100 years ago. Mm-hmm. So in the next 100 years, uh, we will probably live exponentially 
further. So what does that mean for geriatric care? Is that going to start later or does it go on longer? Like longer. do Yeah, so so is it at a point like um Oh, you're you're only eighty years old. I mean, I mean, what are you going to do with the rest yeah. of your life? <laughs> you're only eighty. Yeah. yeah, but at this point, maybe I'm like that one who brings the clouds and to the bright day. But I'm thinking, you live to be 110. It's like, what's what's your goals? What are your aspirations yeah. for the rest of your life? We also assume that 110 yeah. is associated with what we think of as 110 now. Yeah, but what's your quality of life? So CRISPR claims claims that can yeah that solve that you being 100 is like you being 40 you are extending each of those years by x amount rather than just tacking on maybe poor life quality years at the end of your life hundreds of years down the road but right now anybody who's 100 you see pictures of them hey congratulate they're not out playing they're not yeah they're They're not not thrilled about being there full of preservatives sure no but they're the ones that claim they're just like oh no I haven't done anything. They're, pull, well, they're pumping them full of drugs just to keep them alive. But it would be a huge mistake to think that in 10 years, those exact same people who would be that age at that point aren't having a much, like a significantly higher quality of life. Okay. They are going to be a lot better off. I would like so, to the point where it's hard so to see. So what does that do for my Social Security benefits? Oh, it's already it's, gone. It's bad. <laughs> Ours is way gone. <laughs> everything about everything you've ever hoped for is just down the drain. It's right. so garbage. Right. It sounds like we don't or won't need them. We, yeah, you know. <laughs> At some that. point, we will still die, and then we'll still... Um, it's going to cost a lot, and everyone's going to suffer for it. But it's just going to be prolonged. And retirement age, which was 66... Oh, 85. Tom- I mean, tomorrow, what's if, if we doing can... for my 401k? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Though, but tomorrow, if you can live till you're 150, it's not unreasonable to ask. That's crazy. Well, yeah, but if, which is not, again, within our generation, someone's going to live to be that age. It's not unreasonable to ask them to work longer. Yeah, but can you imagine the Walmart greeter at 135 years old? That's what I'm saying. But again, we, we're, we're picturing this Hello. age. Yeah, not at this age. <laughs> But we're assuming that time <laughs> okay. has the same effect on people uh, every one of those single decade. CRISPR guys it again. <laughs> well, I get that. Oh, here so we, we go. Talking, we're talking here about, we go. Um, 100 years ago, so we're talking about 1918. Sure. The average lifespan was probably like 60 something. Right. Sure. Or less. But or yeah. Way less. But less because like everybody was dying of yellow fever and. Dang mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Just like random stuff. Like, oh, I got the flu. Oh, well, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. So I, and you got when you're, the gout. We, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did. So when you're talking about a hundred, real yeah, thing. So at 140 years old, I mean, we could probably the quality of life is going to be a lot higher than it was. Like when we think of somebody that is even 110, we're like, I mean, that's cool that you lived that long and all, but like you're really. But at some point, yeah, you're, you're just you're, really prolonging the inevitable. Exactly. Yeah. But in 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 the next even 10 years. You know, somebody that lives to be 120 years old, that's a they, what they say is the, the, the next person to live to be 150 years old has already been born. You should really be thinking of genetic enhancement like you think of the Internet, which is it goes so quickly. It evolves so fast that whatever we think is possible right now is probably easily possible. We're, we're probably already past that in the sense of... Music. Of where we can kind of create as a species. So. Sorry, yeah, we do things in the background. You can just keep talking like yeah, you're, you're good. You I'm talk. Just, I'm trying to wrap my mind around the fact that we're going to live to be 150. Not us. And that's not and us, just we. So the yeah. weirdest part about that entire thought process is that's going to be like such a low bar for humanity in the next 100 years. In 100 years, we're going to be like, I can't believe we only live to be 150. You know I know. What? I There's so much I could have done with my life. I know. What center. was I doing? <laughs> so, <laughs> Mars. I'm going to probably right. lose friends on the Brewing Network, but the <laughs> largest beer podcast that has thousands of listeners. The Brewist? Uh, well, the Brewing Network. Or just other ones. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I one. I listen to that, and they just sit there, and they kind of talk about things like this, and they end up just like, it's just not, it's just filled with nothing but cuss words and just like, that's why I don't like to cuss on this. Bodies. Dick yeah. jokes. Dick we jokes. can say, <laughs> yeah, we can say and that. And just like burping and farting the whole time, and they don't get anywhere. And it's really? Like, oh yeah, and they have thousands of followers. <laughs> and this is actually fun to listen to. It is really. And yeah, 
I mean, we've gone two hours, and it's like I want to just keep going more. Like yeah. literally, it doesn't feel because I look. I'm like, oh, let's see if I have any. You know, two and a half. Like, are you two and a half hours? That's where we're at right now. So yeah, at yeah. my previous brewery, when we'd be bottling, we'd throw on some. But we've had great brews we've to had drink some with. Very too bad that listening. This sorry, this yeah, didn't happen. Well, you know what? I threw it out there, and that's yeah. you know that's a part <laughs> of it. We'd listen to some high profile beer podcasts, and they were terrible. We would mm. never make it mm. past 30 minutes. That's because you weren't listening to ours. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but they're very, and they are very high profile thousands, so I'm just throwing that out there. That We, need, a, we need to bump up our numbers is what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, you just <laughs> talk about your game, man. <laughs> no, I'm saying no. I'm just saying. I throw $35, $40 a month at this thing <laughs> on Facebook question. trying to get more people here. <laughs> How long did we live back in the day of Jesus? How old were we? 20, oh, that's a, that's a very 20, good 20, 30 years old. Not oh. much. Um, yeah. Though let's just say fifty. So, so let's say far, fifty. Mary it's far fewer than we think it was. We Mar- saw Iceman from Mary was twelve, right? Twelve, thirteen years old. She was thirteen when yeah. no, no, not when she died. No, when she had Jesus. Yeah, but that was pretty typical. That was but average. Like, yeah. Was probably but if you think if you think about it in that point, like even people today are not having kids until they're even thirty. Well that was I mean, even that's, happening uh forty fifty years ago. So the Iceman, seven thousand years ago in uh Italy, northern Italy was this again was seven thousand. The years Ice ago. Man, like uh, like not vanilla George Ice Man. Yeah, <laughs> basically <laughs> the Ice Man, not Val Kilmer the in Ice Top Man. Gun, Anybody? not Ice Man from <laughs> UFC. Uh, no, the original Ice Man. I was going Top uh, Gun was seven thousand years yeah. ago. Uh, I think he was seventy six or seventy seven. So they were living roughly as long as we were, kind of on a per yeah, average scale. A hundred years ago, we weren't because smoking was healthy. Right. That was a good thing. Two out of three they doctors recommend active. camels. They did. They did. It's Back like then. an ad in Life magazine. Yeah. It's like, how dumb were we? Well, we were dumb. dumb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's going to be weird for you. It's going to be all weird these to happy see. people. Right. It's like a Johnny Carson. How dumb were we? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be, it's, it, it's incomprehensible to think That's about a, where we're going to be a sure. hundred years from now when we're living four times as long. It's a good way to leave it. So question, why do we need to live that long? Oh, and then and then this happens. Yeah. Well, so why do we need to live that long? I mean, honestly, because, I because I nobody wants to die. die. Young. Because I want to see do. my grandchildren and mm-hmm. I want to see their um, grandchildren and I want to agree a big great great great, great grandpa. Young, I want to live that old. Do I <laughs> number one fear? Number one fear. Yeah. Do I end die. this with the I most depressing quote that I've ever heard in my life? I'll just do it. I'll kill the podcast. Let me destroy this entire podcast with this quote. And it was, I was born too young to see the exploration of Earth and uh, born too late. No, did I ruin it? No, you didn't. <laughs> you're, 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 you're pretty Born too late to we see. Edit this, edit this. I was born too late to see the exploration of Earth and born too young to see the exploration of space, mm-hmm. which is exactly what it is. Yeah. We've, we've already pretty we're, much. We're in that middle point yeah. right there. Like, yep. You know, we didn't see the space, the, the, the birth of, of Earth, but now we're trying to go to space, but we're right in the middle of it. Yeah. That, I, like, I get what you're saying Convenient era of trying to tr- space travel. All right. So I guess, um, and we didn't even get into overpopulation, which is a whole other topic. When Not we real, by the way. Which, when we get into... <laughs> yeah, right? There's plenty of land. <laughs> Plenty of land. I've we get seen it. I, we live, we I, I have driven Our through it in those. in South Dakota. I've driven yeah. through it on I ninety. Yeah. We live in Wyoming. <laughs> you know, there's space. <laughs> there yeah. is space. Well, the wall there. drug will house <laughs> yeah. several people. <laughs> it will. So <laughs> they're not get, housing anything else in the wall drug. <laughs> I get. I guess because we are derailing numerous times here. So I want to <laughs> end this on this final question: What does it mean to be human? Then. Ooh. Human means untouched by anything else. Uh, it means it means. Why? Why? What does it mean to be a better human? If we use CRISPR, I mean. Well, you're you're messing with that gene. You're you're. So so if I were to go, if we have the knowledge to do so, and God gave us that knowledge to do so, then why is that a wrong thing to do? I would just consider myself a better human being. What what <laughs> is better? What but but then what is better? What, I mean, where's that line? What is what does better mean? I mean, it, for you, better might mean, oh, I'm, I'm smarter. For someone else, it might be, oh, I'm taller. For, for someone else, it might mean, oh, I was born white. 
I mean, I mean that we're going to start getting into some social I'm, structures. You know, I'm Scorpio, uh, but I'd be <laughs> Virgo. I'd be the Virgin Virgo. I would be the untouched. You know, that's what I would go for. You know, I would be the untouched human being. That's so, what I would think would be the better human being. Back to the whole. Get up a little closer. Perfect. None of us are perfect. We're all striving right. to be better. We are not. Yeah, absolutely. Except I agree. We we were. We were made to be perfect. Did you guys see the Chris Pratt video on MTV? Yes, yeah, so Generation. I was shocked. I was shocked. That was amazing. That was very cool. I everybody should watch. Have that. You, Have you watched it? That was okay. very awesome. That he I did not praised know. God, I did and, not know and that. I thought that was awesome of him mm-hmm. to do in a Cons- room full of uh-huh. hypocrisy of people. You know, like well, not his like millennial and younger. Oh yeah, he had uh, no, right no, no, no. He's he was preaching to the choir, you know. Like I he, wouldn't say hypocrisy. I would say uh, to a generation there was of people, people in that room that were like, yeah, I that. but <laughs> did, did yeah. you hear the but, applause at what he oh, said? Absolutely. So, I think it was. I I would have gladly yeah. applauded that. I I would say it was. He was talking to a generation of people that have been taught completely different than the well, majority. Raised on God, watch TV. That's all you gotta do. Yeah. Yeah, so Chris Pratt did the opposite of whatever you see on TV. Yeah, and even and even through some well humor put. in it. Well put. Yeah. I, I mean, I I like the uh, you know if you got to poop at a party. I mean, yeah. I, <laughs> because he, everybody loves Chris Pratt, so they're gonna listen to whatever he says. He had the right platform, the right time, the right place, and he threw it down. Mm-hmm. And he, and I'm like, Whoa. I feel like he earned that yeah. platform. Yeah. No, he, he was oh, a dude, he was yeah. a stripper for a while <laughs> yeah. in Hawaii. Well, not to, not was to a mention par- uh, yeah. the, his first show, Parks and Rec. He yep. was a he kind didn't know nothing. Food. He was a yeah. dumb guy. Yeah. Dumb guy, yeah. dumb guy, dumb guy. He did it really well. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. he did yeah. it very well. Well, and uh, Marky Mark was a underwear yeah. model. I mean, yeah. I mean, so you can... You can come from anywhere. Actors do what they got to do to pay the bills sometimes. Yep. You yep. Know? Mm-hmm. I agree. So, okay, back to <laughs> reality here. <laughs> um, uh, what what does it mean to be human? I mean, if we're going to use CRISPR to enhance humanity, what what uh, <sighs> is there as a line? As soon as you use it, Geo... You are a geo human being, crispy. Crisp, you're a crispy human you're, you're being. Crispy. Or are you I just like this better? crispy. Well, yeah, you would like be better crispy. because I, you've got the I gene tr- that I don't have that would make yeah. me susceptible to. So, without that gene, aren't we all just striving to be better? But what is better? What is better for you? What is better for it's, him? What is perception? Exactly. Yeah. So, where's that line? What is what does better mean? I think there's a reasonable yeah. perception which says. Either you're intelligent and you're, or you're not, which is a controversial line to start to talk about. But even if you said, are you more athletic mm-hmm. or not? Like, I, I feel like most people can say, yes, there's a more athletic and <laughs> Logan. Mark and Mark athletic. does not compare. Well, yes. I want, I, I do. There's, there's <laughs> Marky Mark on so. one side of the spectrum. Right. Feeling better as perfection. But I think more like trying to be like Jesus is just helping people. Yep. Helping. Being better is just helping everybody. Look at the question, Nick. Society. Not to be better as an athlete. Just to be be a better human being. Up one. Not to be able to shoot threes and drink. Yeah, but as soon as. All right, all right, all right. Let's just say. Let's just say on the virus side. They they make us susceptible. Uh, like you're not going to get the, all the viruses that are happening right now. A new one's going to come out, and now you're not susceptible to that one. You know, you like talk about it? Okay. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So yes, you can make me better on that, but down the road, something else is going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, always. You could make That's why me we're better. Always striving to be better. Okay. Always. Okay, we got we have a question here from the audience. And um, I don't I didn't want to pose it to the group, but uh, before I ask the question, so I'm going to bring it up to the group. Um, So the question is, what if you don't believe in God? Oh, so you're so you're different. Just because you don't believe in God, you're you're now a different human being and you are better or less or greater or more. Right. So, but what does that mean? So this whole thing has been on religion and, and the social structure of society and playing God and all that. But uh, what if you don't believe in God? I think we've played a significant like part in trying to define these places, but a significant point of all of this is that we've, we've defined what it is to be a moral human being. And I don't think that necessarily transcends 
like a religious person or a non-religious person. I think most people can say it's not okay to murder someone else. It's not okay to uh, denigrate someone else for being lesser. There are the say. Ten Commandments, and yeah. you should kind of abide by those. Sure, <laughs> don't, but don't I don't even think... Brit, Brit, you're also have, talking about a God law. If sure. you don't believe in God... Yeah, but, but don't God mur- laws are made into human laws. Ex- they were. They were. Or, Right. Or vice versa, right? Exactly. Was yeah, that's a good point. I, <laughs> Sorry, I boom. Just, I just blew it up there. <laughs> boom, CRISPR. Exactly. Yeah. Was there ten or did he drop the one right. tablet? And was there, there really twelve? <laughs> yeah. Fifteen. Let's and be now, real. There's, now there's ten. Yeah. It was a buy nine get one free. And suddenly <laughs> here we are. Yeah, the tablet ended. That's all we got. Sorry, I just I got tired of chiseling. But I, I mean, it, it's a, it's an important part for scientists. Chris has got a, a question about living longer. Chris, go ahead and ask that question, and uh, we'll get it there. Yeah, yeah. about living longer. We, we talked about that. I mean, we we kind of covered uh, living beyond the 120. We, yeah. we we did cover that earlier. Yep. Um, and there is there is some implications to society, as in like overpopulation. But if we're living longer, then we start. Do we get into space exploration? Yep. If we're living to you know. 200 300 400 a thousand years or whatever can we see that next star can we get to the next solar system potentially so the size of space is insanely well back in my day (laughs) when we saw the stars (laughs) we we used to climb uphill both ways in the snow we thought they were pinholes (laughs) in the sky and you know but that's about where we are as humans for understanding where our place is in kind of the bigger picture. God, I sound like I'm comfortable ridiculous. getting to about 85 <laughs> years old and going, well, that's, like, yeah, I, that's, I that's, had it. I did it. At. I did it all. Yeah. <laughs> but my way. I guess I'm 85 and I feel like I'm 40. <laughs> But that's Sinatra and that's exactly yeah, it was this, a little Sinatra. this I'm point not right have here. Children until Ooh. I'm fifty or sixty. This exact point right <laughs> we, here is we the got like biggest eight point. conversations yeah. going on right. at one time. This okay. is the most important point. We we think of extending life as we're just going to keep getting older, but that's not really well, how it's going to look as humans. We're going to stay thirty or forty for twice as long forever forever Forever. but no no, it's exactly what we're gonna do and no one's gonna say 40 for an extra 20 years maybe there are some people that'll say no to that but from the scientist Mm -hmm. perspective i'm gonna be like hey i want to see where we can go from this i want to see what like planets we can colonize and maybe there's life on other planets Maybe we are that species that is supposed to help, uh, that is destined, if you will, to help other species kind of cultivate life and become that kind of. I don't know. You, I don't know. What you even call that. <laughs> You're the one talking. Senti- <laughs> sentient life on other planets, We're like just do- multiplying so much. Scientists want to put us on another planet. Ooh. I mean, I'm not opposed. Like I said, there's a right. lot of land out there. North Dakota, there's, South Dakota, they there's a lot of land. land. There's and, a lot exactly. of land. And with CRISPR and global warming, it'll actually be uh, tempered humor or tempered yeah. uh, climate there. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be just <laughs> it's going to be great. Yeah. Be Basically, fine. Florida Keys. I'll we'll be in a bubble. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, we didn't, I mean, we kind of diverged off the final question what does it mean to be human? And is is there a line? Does the uh, does the line move? Do we evolve as humanity? I feel like we've proven time and time again that the line moves. Exactly. I think I think that's look look. It at would be hu- hard to argue against that. Look at humanity a hundred years ago. I yeah. mean, uh, average well, lifespan, height. Yeah. Uh, you know, just what we were doing in society. Yep. I mean, all right. So I I saw Chris's question there just a second ago, and and I I'm gonna bring up a little thing. Um, I mean, I mean, growing up as a kid, um, you know, as a as a, as a very young young kid, you really didn't know about death, you know, and and you your parents had to tell you about it. It's like, hey, five, six, seven years old. You're like, yeah, no, grandpa died. And and he's moved on. He's no longer with us anymore. So I mean, that all kind of just goes away, you know. Because CRISPR, oh, you're just gonna stay alive for 
like ever, yeah, whatever, much, yeah. like whatever, you right. know, whatever you want to do. Because when you live we the lifespan of, die. so it, it brings the, a whole new realm of, of kids learning about death because death is kind of irrelevant anymore. Irrelevant? It can't, Irrelevant. That's what I... That's so what I if it, it's put on the you, illness list, then it can be. I mean, we can... So, so right this now... This is a weird conversation to have because it contradicts, like, just facts of life with ethical and... Death and beliefs. taxes. Yeah, death, death, death and yeah. taxes. Right. And now it's just taxes. <laughs> Not all Forever. living... Forever. So, okay, so a common misconception is all living species yeah. die. That's not true. That's never been true. When can I take Social Security? Living, now it's going to be 85 right. instead of 65. Yeah. Literally 2 million years from <laughs> well, now, you have, can maybe take your taxes. Haven't out. we found species that are living today? That jellyfish live indefinitely. Definitely. There are some species of jellyfish that have never died. They just... I mean, short of murdering them, they'll they'll or an accident or and something. Yeah. And it's not that far fetched to think that humans can be in that situation, which is a bizarre point to be at as a species. So for me, hyper intelligent, like, right. what so, do you do with that knowledge? What do you? How do you? How do you approach the complete ethical shift, paradigm shift of? We die when we're seventy or eighty. To we may not need to die. Period. We could live forever. Has now what? Has anybody is anybody here a, a Star Trek Next Generation fan? I'm a techie fan. No, my wife. Okay. I'm a techie fan. So, <laughs> so there I don't was know why that came off so low. So there was a movie. <laughs> um, it's necessary, right? So there was a movie. It was Star Trek: The Next Generation. It was called Insurrection. And they went to this planet. They were finding out what was going on with this, this uh, insurrection going on in the planet. And they went. The, they sent the away team down to the planet, and all was fine. They came back up to the ship, and what they noticed was that they started seeing f- some effects from being down on the planet. They didn't know what these effects were, and as time went on, they realized that for some reason, like their clocks had been reset. That uh, you know, uh, the the captain of the ship, uh, Jean Luc Picard. He yep. um, he could like the warp timing. He was uh, he could notice some, uh, a little shift in there, and the shift that he noticed was actually better than what he could notice when he was at the academy. You know, it, it, back, way yeah. back when. Yeah. So what they were finding was the like something in the planet was causing people to live longer, and the people that they had interacted with, who they thought were 30, 40, 50 years old, were in fact. 300, 400, 500 years old. And the society had been set up for a long period of time. So at 80 years old, you were considered like an apprentice. Right. Like you, like you, Back s- then, yeah. right. Yeah. If you're living to 500 years old, that's 80 years is rad. like, oh, you, you, you just kind of got a handle on life, like right. just basic life. Now we need to start talking about your vocation at 80. You know, and then what? Are, what are you going to do in life now that you've hit eighty? Right, and that social completely different than what we have set up today. Well, even the last hundred years, our social structure has changed. Yeah, well, based if you th- on where we retire. Well, if you think about know. how long people are living today, right. let, let's just say the average age is about uh, ninety, because sure. I, I know it's probably plus or minus five or ten years, right. whatever. So, but if you think about it in the school structure, we go to school for 18 years. Yep. And then uh, if you want to continue on, then you do another two, three, four, five, or 10 and years. That's almost expected at this point. And, that, and then you're done by 30. Right. And then you live to 90. So a third of your life is school. And then two thirds of your life is actually living it. If you're living to 100, even 150 years old, only going to school for 30 years seems pretty minimal. Right. And the big question is, is what is what is living your life? And I think that's the question mm-hmm. we all, I guess we all ask ourselves. Yep. Are we are we winding down? Do we need I to? I think so. I, th- I think we've reached our uh, main capital goal. It's, it's a never-ending <laughs> topic. I, I know. You know, we could, yeah, we could talk for another uh, hour on this. We could spend three hours on this. Oh, wait. Oh, we've wait, only. Wait, we did. <laughs> we've we did. almost spent we three did. hours. You know. And we're out of beer. So. Yeah. No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> there's the public's still, fault. We're yeah. not supplying us more these. beer. There's still the after talk if you want to talk about it. The fridge so, does anybody have any final thoughts? There's or do one we, more uh, beer in there. 
Are there any, does, uh, I mean, collectively, I mean, we've kind of there's run the a, gamut. There's an insane necessity for, especially America, to stay focused on just understanding what we're going through. And I think it's really easy for us, the second we hear something we don't agree with, to to back away from it and then hope it dissipates and, and, and dissolves. We need yeah. to find. Oh, it'll a way. just go away. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, it'll it'll be good. It'll be good. We'll be okay. And no, there's. No, a... I think as humans we change and we continually Certainly. change, mm-hmm. and we, we need to accept that. And we don't like as a species. We don't like. We change. don't like change. Yeah. We don't at all. It's important to even, stay even though open. we do. Right. We do. <laughs> even though at the you end of the day, you say you do, and you look at them, you're like, no, okay. you don't. Yeah. I really hate being so intelligent. Also, my kids are going to be intelligent. So here we go. Yeah. Uh, but. It's something that humans need to just never get tired of researching more and more and staying curious. I think that's a huge thing for humans. Mitchell, well, to, Mitchell, any final thoughts? Yeah, to piggyback on that, you made a lot of good points. And I think a lot of that can also go on the other side of the religions aspect. There's a lot of people want to know about. We don't talk a lot about it on here. There's a lot to talk about. A lot of people have questions. It's interesting. It's, it's super interesting. Whether people think it's completely bogus it's garbage or they live by it every day it's still something to talk about mm-hmm. so i don't think it's something we should shy away from and this is not going to go away yeah. right no. i mean this is something this is only going to get bigger yep. yeah so just you know the whole religious aspect aspect of it so they keep talking about it. bringing them mm-hmm. it fits in every topic and yep um, also and it's vast. I mean, beer. how and <laughs> also beer, beer. <laughs> <laughs> the crisper aspect of beer mm-hmm. yeah uh, for me, I, I yeah. think that, uh, we could make hops. <laughs> so amazing. Whoa. Yeah. Side note, they you can, don't need hops anymore. Well, then you could age every beer. Oh my gosh. No I like beer with ever. Crisper, crisper is already obsoleted ops. Well, hops. So I was, uh, uh you right. had mentioned the yeast, not the, the, the vanilla producing yep. yeast. I mean, we're not there yet because it kills itself, but, uh, yeah, I, I think cool. that there it's getting there. Yeah. Th- I didn't think it's about literally. That. It's already there. Yeah, we so can crisper beer, it will never go bad. You don't need hops anymore. Yeah. Oh. Crisper has already done that. Well, you could. Yeah, that's possible right now. Mm-hmm. Yep. You go insert bottle, yank out that <laughs> perfect <laughs> bottle. It up. IPAs <laughs> last for five years. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're good. All right, I think we're gonna end this topic. I mean, we've uh, we've kind of exhausted all possibilities. We're we're oh. still getting comments from the uh, the people that are watching us along. I appreciate. We the call old... that the peanut gallery, the well, legitimate yes. peanut gallery, no, the, the virtual, oh, the virtual the peanut gallery up. has yeah. moved. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I think so. that last comment is, is is that whether religion, scientific, or just human beings, neither one, we're all striving to be better. Right. And what's wrong with that? Yep. Nothing. I think that uh, I think the hardliners are going to say, "Well, where's the line?" I think that uh, scientific community is like, "Well, we can." And then there's going to be the ethical people say, "There's, there's a, there, we should look at this," and say, "Most uh, people, I think, assume yeah. there's a common ground." Yeah, exactly. So. so I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think it's a thing we need to uh, discuss and research and talk about and have an ethical community surrounding it and. I just want to point out we've been on the last call for the last, <laughs> last hour. Call. Yeah. Flip so the switch. You, you know what it. the common ground is? This is the common ground. Wow. All, right. Oh. Done. All right. So what we'll, we'll oh, have been switched. Oh, yeah. oh bar is closed. Yeah. No, but uh, I have or, or, yeah. no amount of it's only last call will for some save of the you people. now. Yeah. We'll head into the after talk, but uh I appreciate you joining us. Uh this has been uh <laughs> Episode 63, we've been talking, uh, this is CRISPR Part 2, we've been talking the religious and social aspects. stuff. And I hope you, we, uh, we expanded your mind. I, I think uh, Mitchell had, he definitely had the mind thinker pose load. going on a lot of it. So uh, we, we hope we educated you on it. I hope you do your research on it. Um, we have had our guest, uh, Nick Ted, uh, the science teacher, has come back uh, for a second time. I, I appreciate I, that. I appreciate hope, it hope we didn't scare you away this no, time again. Never. Uh, Mitchell's been back for, uh, uh, what is this, number four now? Number four, see you next month. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nothing and then, wrong with that. Yeah, Sabrina joined us for a little bit there from the peanut gallery and uh, got brave enough to join us on the microphone. And uh, my name's Brian. I'm Britt. Thank you for joining us. Have a good